Wait, wait, okay. wait. Wag muna tayo mag-record. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to webinar number 10 of SIBP. Uh, do put your greetings in the chat room if you are there. Uh, tell us where you're coming from. I know that I sent out invitations to quite a number of people outside of the Philippines, but we'd love to hear where you are, how's the weather down there or what, wherever you are. And uh, do share your thoughts. What's your greeting, local greeting in your part of the world I can't see the chat is there anything in the chat now hi I'd like to see ah hello hello you're here with us nice oh most probably it was Professor Mahendra who shared the link with you, uh, Dr. Prashant. <laughs> nice to see you with us. <laughs> and a very nice evening to you. It's oh. an afternoon, a very pleasant afternoon. The weather is very good. All the way and in India. Yes, we are from India. Yes. And hilly region of Uttarakhand. Yes. And we are at the foothill of Himalayas. Yes, I remember when I went there, I could see already the silhouette of the Himalayas and I could feel the, uh, the cold weather <laughs> 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 pretending that I was already taking my what station one <laughs> yes. of the Himalayas. But uh, All the best for your session. Thank and you. I'm eagerly waiting to listen to the eminent speakers. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you brought along quite a number of friends as well as students and other colleagues yes. with you. Yes. So we have from uh, Nueva Caceres, Naga City. Hello. This is so nice. Uh, so how is everything there? Uh, how are the uh, pili nuts? Are they surviving the weather? The uh, You have a lot of, uh, what's this, uh, volcano, uh ashfall as well oh we have from nueva Ecija. hello jemmy billiones nice to see you just marhai nahapon napala all the way from where where is this is this uh this from is kamsur kamsur hello nice to see you and of course my good friend professor jason all the way from nueva Ecija. did you bring oh we have apple hello apple uh nice to see you i saw your what your new is that your new uh, advocacy? Uh, I saw it posted in the in the uh, Facebook. Na imbag na adlaw kadakayo am amin region one Pangasinan all the way. Oh, I love your what do you call this? The food, uh, the bangus. Uh, what da dawel? No, not dawel. Dawel is the restaurant, but you have this very nice flavored. Uh, you only eat the belly because the rest is not as good as the belly. <laughs> okay. We also have friends from, oh, Baguio, hello. Oh, that place must be cold now. So you can experience really the, uh, the Christmas season already. Christmas is in the air. I hope it's, uh, and people are going, I think uh, with open doors, all you have to do is register at uh, Baguio Visita Bayon. And you're, you're able to access as long as you're able to register all the information needed. Nice to see you here. Hello, good afternoon from University of Esugian. Is this in Leyte? Madayao from University of Mindanao, Davao, Philippines. Philippines. We were there. Uh, Dr. Beth and I were there. Um, when was that? In 2019, we had a uh, doing our dagupan bagus. But what is that? What do you call it? There's there's a variety that you have there. It's not the regular bangus because it's the the muso of the bangus is very sharp. It's very good. 
Oh, hello, Dr. Arnold and Cheta. You are you made it. Thank you very much for bringing in your students. Oh, uh, Mary Rose Naganso, Eastern Samar po. Okay, very nice. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, already getting. Oh, hi, Dr. Ma Professor Mahendra. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. You brought in. Uh, I saw your uh, your colleague uh, earlier on. And Abonuan Bangu is correct. That's uh, that's the nice flavor. Oh, we have our friends also from Iris. Hello, thank you very much. Do tell your friends. Uh, what time is it? Do we start already? How many how many delegates do we have already? Based on the sign up, we were su were supposed to have around two hundred plus participants already. Uh, I also, oh, from uh, uh, from Dr. Yanga's colleges. Hello, Mom, uh, Pilin. I hope you're okay. It's 4.03 already, so maybe we should begin. What do you think? We have already 59. Do we wait some more? Maybe we can just start ahead. Uh, we'll do the preliminaries, okay? So, at this point, we'll start. This is Lobster Inc. Hong Kong School. This is our 10th webinar, uh, Tip Fee. This is the best in class online hospitality training at your fingertips. In the, uh, in the uh, Sixth Tourism Human Resource uh, Congress, we said that it was at your hands, but right now it's gonna be at your fingertips and learn how to adopt the internal in hospitality training platform used by the world's major corporate brands. And uh, our speakers are going to show us, will present to us quite a number of uh, uh, best practices, as well as what makes Lobster in Costco different from all the other learning management uh, systems that are in place right now. It's specific to uh, hospitality and here from the experts of LPU Manila who have successfully implemented Lobster Inc. So, uh, before we go on, let me just go to my next uh, slide. Uh, just some technical briefing, uh, web webinar guidelines. Put cell phones in silent mode to reduce interruptions in co and concentration. Microphones will be turned off for all participants. Uh, and then participate actively. Uh, you can use the chat for greetings and we'll post a link later on for your questions. Use the chat for put comments, uh, maybe some uh, feedback if you're happy with uh, the presentation or some thumbs up or some happy faces to what uh, our speakers are saying. We're also, go if you want to have a good view, uh, go to the view which is found on the upper right corner of your screen and choose speakers view. So you can have a good view of the speaker as well as some of the spotlighted speakers that we're going to be putting on later. To view presentations well, well you can uh, move the divider to the right or left, depending on how big you want the slide to be, because there's some imaginary uh, divider between the uh, face of the speaker as well as the present presentation. Only those who stay at at least 80% of the session and complete the evaluation will be given e-certificates. And no video will be turned on for all participants except for the speakers. And maybe later on, maybe do the photo opportunity towards the end of this uh, session. Um, for questions, please go to the link and write your questions. My friend uh, uh, Tinette will be putting the uh, link in the uh, chat. Tinette, have you done that? Put, uh, because the chat can go very quickly and you might lose sight of the question, uh, which is we, we might get lost with a number of questions that you, you'll be posting. So we've created a Google Sheet where you can put all the questions and I'll have access to that later on and I'll read out the question. If you can just put the name to what, uh, for the person's going to, for, for the person you want to respond to the question, if it's all of them, then maybe you can just put all and then the question and we'll try to make sure that we're able to read all these questions later on. As an opening prayer, uh, let's uh, put ourselves in the presence of uh, the Lord and listen to this very nice song that's rendered by a very good uh, friend from, used to be with the Department of Tourism, but right now he's a faculty member already. Uh, let's welcome Alec. Sweet to sound that sea. 
has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life and shining as the sun with no less taste to sing God's praise that when we'd first be Thank you. It really puts you in the mood. Uh, we offer indeed everything that we're going to have here, our discussions, the sharings, the questions, the kind attention you're going to be giving to our speakers and offer it to somebody up there. Uh, wait. At this point, I'd also like to uh, describe who the participants are. This was actually something that was uh, prepared by our colleague, uh, uh, the other day. And so some of the participants may not be included in this, but I'd like to uh, just present, uh, go ahead with this. Uh, membership in TIBFI. This was a question that we uh, asked and uh, we noted that only 16% are actually members of uh, TIBFI and the rest are actually uh, non-members, but we'd give you a lot of information. We'd share some information about TIBFI later on so they get to know uh, what TIBFI is all about, what we're doing and uh, uh, and thank you for considering uh, spending some time with us today. What sectors do we have? We have academe, which is the biggest pie cut. We have around 79%. We have our industry partners at 11%. We have government uh, at 8%. And we have 2% representing our labor section. So academe is really going to be something that uh, co has consistently been our top uh, uh, attendee to any event. But Suffice to say that this particular uh, webinar is not just for uh, the uh, academe, but it's also something that's going to be relevant for our industry as well as government and labor. We, when you talk about upskilling, reskilling, cross-skilling, this is something that's going to be uh, something that's relevant for them. For the academe, the biggest chunk actually comes from our private non-sectarian at 39%, uh, with 35% uh, coming from SUCs and LUCs coming at 17% and private non-sectarian at uh, that. Okay. Our industry sector, the biggest chunk comes from FNB. We have accommodations at 12% and so on with the other areas as well. For government, the biggest chunk would be those coming from CHED. So welcome higher education, uh, uh, commission and higher education. Um, we are very happy to have you here with us. We also have representatives from DepEd, uh, DOT, as well as TESTA. So at this point, I'd like to just, you know, share a little bit of information about TIBP. TIBP is already, already 40 years old. Uh, we've been doing quite a number of things since 1980. And uh, we originally started uh, called 
uh, Hotel and Restaurant Industry Board and was formed in 1980, but because we recognized that there were other sectors uh, in tourism, and that's why we had to rename the uh, foundation into something that would encompass the other members of the tourism. So we now have the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated uh, in 1991, and this was approved in 1992, and we're the only surviving industry board from the National Manpower Youth Council which is actually the agency that uh, changed into what is now known as TESDA. We've done quite a number of things since 1980. We've done several uh, uh, articles of incorporation and constitution uh, amendments already, and we've changed names, we've changed some of the provisions. And just last September 24, a new uh, uh, constitution was approved by the jail membership, and this is something that's going to be processed already. It's, it, once it's approved by the SEC, it's, we're going to upload this already in our website. Our vision and mission is something that we revise quite uh, often, and the last uh, revision was done in 2018 with a grant that was given to uh, Bayan Academy, and we're really fortunate to have had Dr. Ed Marato, who walked us through in the revision of our vision and mission. Uh, we envision to be highly professional education, training, research, and development institutions that are responsive to the needs, to the competency needs and workforce requirements of the tourism industry by 2025. 2025 is like four years uh, uh, down the road, but we have a lot of changes that are happening as a result of the recent uh, uh, impact on tourism because of what uh, the COVID-19 has done to us. And maybe we'll have to take a look at what change, uh, and maybe accelerate on some of the uh, objectives that we have. Our mission is to converge government, industry, education, and training sectors in facilitating tourism, human resource development. And to this end, we were very successful. It took what? COVID to actually bring forth a convergence uh, memorandum of understanding together with the Department of Tourism that initiated it. And uh, Department of Education, Technical Education Skills and Development Authority, uh, the Commission uh, on Higher Education, as well as the Tourism Industry Board Foundation Incorporated. This convergence MOU was actually signed November uh, last year, but it took, uh, what, five years, COVID, to actually put that on the table of everyone. And now we're working together to make sure that the seamless progression that is promised in the PQF is something that will be realized. Our objective is to help develop an, uh, an adequate supply of competent tourism professionals and to ensure that education, training, research, and development institutions meet local. So we're looking at local minimum standards or you're looking at uh, the curriculum guides from TESDA, uh, from uh, Department of Education. We're looking at training regulations from TESDA and the CMO. And we're very, very happy because Tim Fina was involved in many of these undertakings in the review of the curricula. We also have ASEC Rika, who's now uh, uh, a member of the Technical Committee of the Commission on Higher Education. For TESTA, we have our ASEAN Masters, and many of our uh, TIPP board members are actually working in the review and uh, validation of the training regulations that we have. Currently, the board is made up of representatives from various organizations that include, I come from, I represent the Hotel and Restaurant Association of the Philippines, uh, Bell is uh, representing the Association of Human Resource Managers in the hospitality industry. We have Tunet, who is actually our technical uh, staff, who is manning the Zoom. She's actually uh, representing the National Organization of Mice. We also have Dr. Glo, who is actually right now involved in another undertaking. Uh, she's attending in behalf of TIBFI, the uh, ASEAN Plus 3. Uh, training and education network up 10, which is currently happening. We're, collab we're trying to find out what collaborations we can do with uh, the participants or those who indicated interest in collaborating with members of uh, participants of the up 10 as well. We have um, uh, Hessel from Noreen, the la labor sector. We also have Merle, who is all the way in the U US right now, but she's going to be representing TV tomorrow in tomorrow's UP10 up event as well. Some of our board of trustees include representatives from Noreen, as well as a newly elected president of Piltoa, Fe Yu. We have our friends from the Department of Tourism, led by Asik Rika, Director Wang, and Ms. Arlene, and our friends from TESDA, led by Asik, uh, Director 
uh, Executive Director uh, Jojo and Executive Director uh, Patty and uh, Marisa Gamurot, as well as the Dean of the UPAIT. These are the members of the board at the moment. Our team few membership is composed of from the government sector, DOT, TESA, and UPAIT. We also have from labor, uh, all the way from uh, National Union of Workers for Hotel, Restaurant, Allied Industry, Central. And we also have from private and public uh, representing industry and academia. We have regular members, these are associations. We have institutional members as well as individual members for that. So right now, uh, we're very proud to be recognized by TESDA uh, as a recognized, one of the recognized industry board representing tourism. Uh, we also have an important role in the implementation of the ASEAN MRA on TP, uh, where three organizations or agencies are very important for each of the ASEAN member states. And uh, we were nominated by uh, the Department of Tourism. Uh, the Department of Tourism is a national tourism organization that leads all the policies as well as programs related to tourism. Uh, in the Philippines. We also have the Tourism Professional Certification Board, uh, which is led by TESA because that's their mandate uh, to provide for certificate uh, assessment and certification. So take a look at your national certificates. If you see the word in the center, complied, complies with the uh, ASEAN MRA on TP, that means to say that particular training regulation has already um, uh, transferred to uh, an aligned uh, training regulation is aligned with the ASEAN MRA on TIPFI, uh, on uh, tourism professional. We also have TIPFI, which is a national tourism professional board, uh, which composed of public and private sectors, including the academia, uh, as identified by the ASEAN National Tourism Organization. At this point, I'd like to share a uh, video. Uh, any of our webinars, you can actually catch it in our website, 
uh, it's in the resources section. Or you can also take a picture of the QR code and you'll be uh, brought to that. All our nine webinars are actually out there for everyone to view. A lot of information that's still relevant. Uh, we started July and uh, we had the last one sometime uh, uh, October and all the topics are still relevant uh, as we speak. Uh, Lobster Inc. was actually in one of our uh, webinars in the past. Uh, and this is something that you can also take a look at as well. So we just finished with our sixth Tourism HR Congress and we had a lot of participants. And this was this particular topic that we're having today is something that was of great interest to many participants. And that's why we're bringing them to a longer session. And you'll now hear a lot of information from our various speakers. If you want to get info, information about our, our it, what is the uh, uh, organization, you can just email your concern to uh, secretary at tourismindustryboard.org or visit our website and we have a lot of information there. It's going to be overhauled. We're going to be doing some new look for our website. So watch out for that soon. Okay, so at this point, we now go to our main agenda item that we have. Uh, we have very good speakers lined up today. And uh, we'll start off with the visionary, Hosco's visionary, the link uh, to where Hosco is here in the Philippines. Uh, we have Mr. John Lohr, Director of Strategic Partnerships and Innovation. He's been with Hosco for a long time, but then there was something that happened and now you have a merger of Lobster Inc. as well as Hosco. Then we move on to have somebody who's going to be taking a look, bring us, walk us through to how they were able to zero in into one particular uh, learning uh, supplementary uh, platform, uh, Dr. Beth. She is actually, uh, she used to be our, she was our regular moderator because she's our speaker right now. We had to do uh, some quick changes in the uh, assignments. And so uh, Beth is going to be presenting uh, what were the steps that they took in uh, LPU to be able to pick this particular program as a good way of supplementing the learning of students. And you know, with flexible learning, there were a lot of uh, what quick solutions that were provided. Some schools actually decided to make their own materials. Some schools decided to uh, do uh, get from a third party and some schools decided to do a combination. Uh, we also have uh, at this point, uh, Mr. Uh, Chef Heinz uh, Pelayo is the program chair, and he's the one managing what's happening in making sure that the students, mind you, it's not small numbers, this is not small change you're talking about. I was just asking him yesterday during the uh, uh, technical run, how many students uh, are you talking about in, who's enrolled in Hosco? And he said 3,000. And you know, uh, he'll tell you what were the uh, ups and downs of things, but he said mostly it's really you know, on their own right now. But before we go and discuss this, I'd like to launch a poll. Let me just, uh, wait, let me see. Do you have the poll already? Uh, let me see, relaunch. Okay. Okay, there's some questions on screen right now. If I give you like one minute to run through the questions, I'd like to see uh, answers from our audience. Do you have the poll with you? Are you able to see this? Question number one, vaccination status. Are you fully vaccinated? Two doses, that means, plus a booster. Uh, I just got word, I saw, I was just checking with our barangay and she said that there's no schedule yet for the uh, senior citizens, but the booster shots are already being given to our frontliners. Are you fully uh, vaccinated? Are you uh, with two doses or are you only one dose? It will have impact as to how soon or how quickly face-to-face -face work or face-to-face -face classes are going to be happening. Uh, not yet vaccinated, uh, but you have a choice, but there's another choice that I'd like to see. Uh, do not like to be vaccinated. You know, in several of the webinars that I've attended, uh, there were some hesitancy on the part of some of uh, uh, the participants that they don't like to be vaccinated, etc. And so we'd like to see how you're able to respond to that. For, okay, we've got one who's al al already answered that, but if you don't see it, you can actually see at the bottom, there's a poll and just click that on and you'll find the poll right there in your uh, screen. In your household, what percentage are fully vaccinated? Less than 25%. So that means to say, if there's uh, four of you, 
there's only one who was vaccinated, more than 25, but less than 25, more than 50%, but less than 75%, more than 75%, but less than 95%. And 100%, uh, so that means to say, in your household, you've achieved herd immunity already. Have you heard of lobster egg? The reason that you're here, okay, let's see. Oh, we have quite a good number of people responding. There are already 18 who have responded to that. Oh, we have 38 already responded. What training materials do you need? Do you need materials on food safety and public health? This is actually one of the major uh, what, uh, uh, things that we have to do. Uh, many of the protocols that are being implemented with regards to uh, uh, COVID-19 has something to do with uh, public health. Essential public health, is this something that you want to do? If you were one of our participants in the uh, tourism, uh, six tourism HR Congress, you would have received as part of the virtual uh, bag, uh, free use of the essential public health for one month. And uh, maybe John will tell us the results of this. Front office, do you need that? Hospitality management, pro chef, travel guide on online luxury service. Are these things that you need? You can do actually multiple quest uh, answers for this question. Number five, how much time are you working uh, for our industry people, learning for our students? On site, are those? Do we have participants already who are doing on site uh, face to face? Uh, the face to face um, CMO was just launched, uh, was just signed last November 11. In fact, if you can just save the date of two, uh, December 6, we're going to be having a uh, public orientation. The link is going to be posted somewhere, you'll get it from your regional, like uh, Dr. Ancheta, who's here with us. Uh, They'll post it sometimes. So some people are already do working from home. Oh, some there's a hundred percent who are doing it on site already. Number six, when we reach the new normal, eh? a lot of people, a lot of webinar titles are already talking about the new normal. We're not yet there because we're still in the now normal. Things are changing very quickly. Every week there's new protocols, there are new guidelines, and so when we reach the new normal. Do you think work study will go back to what it was pre-COVID? Uh, I remember the month, it was March 2020. Uh, you want things to go back to where it was when uh, in March 2020? Or are there going to be changes? I was just speaking with Eileen Clemente, who's with Raja Travel Corporation. You're saying that, you know, with there's an efficient use of resources right now with regards to working from home. And, uh, you know, there are people who are effective at that. They don't have to commute. There's uh, work is being done. And so maybe the work from home is something that will still happen even with a new normal. Uh, for you training, uh, for your training and learning, are you using materials that were developed by your own enterprise or organization, by a third party provider? I'm sorry, the choice three is something that's a, a combination. And then number eight, what is the major consideration in selecting training learning materials? Are you looking at costs? Are you looking at credibility, the people behind this particular product? Are you looking at availability? Is this something that's available 24-7, 365 days a year? Are you looking at a complete learning platform, meaning to say you've got uh, the back end as well as the front end interfaces between student as well as trainer? Uh, it's are the materials something that's updated? Does it even cover already COVID protocols in the materials that you have? And does it uh, you want it to have uh, industry standards as well? Uh, let's list. Let's take a look at what would be the answers that you would come out. If given the choice now, where do you want to work study? At home, on site, or combination, or anywhere? They have a new title for this. People you can work anywhere are actually called digital nomads. You can, as long as there's internet, you can be able to work. And there's a lot of jobs actually that allow you to do that. When do you think all will be normal? I just came from, a, from Apten where they had some speakers. By the first half of next year, by the second half of 2022, by the first half of 2023, by the second half of 2024. Let's see what are the 
answers. Let's take a look at sharing the results. Let me see. Okay, there were uh, 105 participants uh, out of 105, 59 only responded. So we have uh, the biggest, the highest answer for number one, which is vaccination status is 73%. World Health Organization uh, uh, identified that the magic number for herd immunity initially was 70%, but now is 85%. And so we're close to uh, that already. In your household, what percentage are fully vaccinated? 41% uh, said that 100% are vaccinated already in their household. Most probably you don't have kids that are younger than 12 years old because we still have, you know, vaccines are not yet available for children that are less than 12 years old. Have you heard of Lobster Inc? Uh, no, there's good prospects for you because this is, the right webinar for you. You'll get a lot of information from the source. It's not going to be secondary information. It's going to be first-hand information getting from our experts right now. What training materials do you need? Let me see. Hospitality management is the biggest at 42%. How much time are you working online, off-site, uh, on-site? Less, uh, and the biggest answer is 34% on-site. So the rest are still working from home. What when we reach new normal, uh, will we go back to what it was pre COVID? And the biggest answer is 56% no, because there's going to be new protocols. You know, accept it. Mass is here to stay. Maybe the shield can be dispensed with, but the mass is here to stay. And you've got to make sure that you avoid uh, what uh, you, you practice social distancing at that. For your training materials, uh, many of our participants are using their own homemade uh, materials at 53%. What is the major consideration in selecting training learning materials? Let's see, a complete learning platform. Let, let's see how complete this is. I think Heinz is going to be able to show this to everyone. If given the choice now, where do you want to study? It's a combination. So again, the limited face-to-face -face is something that's going to happen as well. And uh, when do you think everything will normalize? People are looking at 2022. A lot are also looking at 2023. And going by this morning's uh, sharing, a lot of people were putting their bets at 2023. Okay, so uh, I'll just put the uh, poll uh, on available for you to actually review right later on. But at this point, I'd like to call on our first speaker, uh, the visionary, all the way from... Poland, which is what time do you have right now? It's I think early morning only at their uh, at his country. Okay, uh, don't be surprised because he looks different from the picture that we have here. I give you the floor, John. Uh, we'll have to spotlight you on that. Okay, John, how are you? Hi, Tina. Hello, everybody. Good morning to the Philippines. Good. It's hour. good afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> it's good morning for you. <laughs> from Poland, it's 9.30 in the morning here, uh, but it, it's a pleasure to be with everybody. Um, you know, I've been on a couple of these tip fee uh, webinars, and I always find uh, amazing how well they're organized in terms of promotion and well as um, really setting the stage. I mean, just seeing this poll right now clearly tells me that uh, everybody here right now um, is trying to find solutions, um, but we're all still somewhat in the dark. You know, we have tried to make things work. Some things have worked, some things haven't worked. And we're certainly not yet at that new normal. Um, but look, today, um, I just wanted to be here to tell you a little bit our um, vision in bringing this uh, really online, high-level, best-in-class uh, training to the schools of the world. Um, and after I've done that, um, I thank uh, our participants from LPU and sharing uh, how they made it work. Um, LPU was the first school in the entire Philippines to adopt lobster rings. They were certainly the leader, um, but they've also managed it excellently. And I think um, it's important with any technology adoption is not only uh, taking it, but making it work. And very oftentimes technology doesn't always give the final results what was originally uh, envisioned. So thank you to LPU for being here.
But myself, um, as Tina mentioned, I'm in Poland. I'm not Polish. I am American originally. I'm from the United States. Uh, grew up in uh, Nebraska, small, small town Nebraska, but I then studied in Switzerland, hospitality schools, and worked in seven different countries. And um, for HOSCO, I've had the role of building our partnerships for the last six years. And those partnerships have primarily been with hospitality schools or departments of hospitality. And before that, I worked for the American Hotel Lodging Association as a representative in Europe, promoting their certifications and trainings and partnerships too. So in terms of hospitality schools and the needs of schools in terms of um, providing training, providing curriculum support and equipping students for uh, the industry, which is why we're here, um, I think I have a decent knowledge on that. And I think that brings me to why we decided to work with Lobster Inc or rather why they came to us. Um, if you know me, I'm a bit of a storyteller. So I like to tell stories. Um, and it was truly in February where Lobster Inc came to our offices in Barcelona, the Hosco offices. And basically they had said to us, you know what? We've always been providing enterprise level solutions to the Marriott's, the Hilton's, to the Hyatt's. But in the, the other day we said, what about the schools? And remember this is before COVID. This is just a couple months before COVID hit. And they said, you know, there are so many schools out there preparing young people for the industry, but how are they doing it? Are they using out, outdated resources? Are they really giving them the best in class learning? And if they're going a bit online, are they doing it right? And I kind of said, well, a little bit of yes, a little bit of no. Um, because in all these associations I've been a part of, the constant, and I mean constant, last 10 years question has been, are we bridging the gap between industry and academia? And can it even be bridged? Is there too much control over the curriculum to even allow for that bridging? But when they came to us and they showed us what they did, it was really for me such an aha moment, like this makes perfect sense. You know, why not bring the actual, the real stuff that the industry gives their starters into the classroom? And why would the school do that? I mean, it's not just to support the, uh, the learning, but it's also to support the idea that this is the same kind of expectations that you might have when you join a Marriott or Hilton or Hyatt. And so because of their extremely high level production content, I mean, like really like Hollywood movie style, and of course the LMS that they develop, which allows for everything to be managed. I had this vision that let's try this at schools. And sure enough, two months later, bam, pandemic hits, which of course meant that schools had to rapidly find solutions to online learning. But I'm not concerned about pandemic learning. I'm concerned about after the pandemic, because I am convinced more than ever is that this new normal will be a blended learning format. And why? A couple of reasons. One, in many cases I've uh, talked to schools about, students prefer it. Now they do not, they do not prefer to learn hospitality 100% online. That has become very clear in some of the groups I've learned uh, about during the pandemic who created their own online courses. But hospitality is a people industry and it's a people way of learning and you cannot do it entirely online. But there are certain elements of it that really are core knowledge, the basics. And that can be learned if done well, I think online. And I think it should be learned online because at the end of the day, when you have excellent lectures and excellent professors, they should be focused on mentoring and guidance and not on delivering bare basic knowledge. You know, Use an asymmetric model to give the students that bare essential knowledge, use the online and or the in-class experience to make it stick and make them equipped for the industry. You know, so given all that, the students really say, we prefer the blended. And then we look at the schools. Well, again, once again, let the professors do what they're good at. And if you adopt asynchronous solutions and resources, they can do that and they can do it better than ever. And the discussions that can happen after learning from this asynchronous resources can be far more, more valuable than just sitting there and showing a PowerPoint through a Zoom. That, that does not help people learn, you know? And thirdly, I think we need to understand that online learning is not just in academia, it's in industry and it's going to stay. Why? Because what Lobster Inc. focuses on is time to learn to adequacy of skills. It's all about having those quick, short, bite-sized lessons that stick to a learner or stick to an employee and also are able to be taken at very short increments. Remember, when you're an employee in a hotel, the last thing you want to do is use your paid working time to train, right? 
But if you can do it quick and simple and have bite-sized lessons, even as you're sitting on the bus going to your, to your uh, employer, um, that makes more sense. And finally, probably the most important, whether you are a student right now or you are a worker right now, talent retention and talent recruitment is the biggest challenge that this industry is facing right now. If I put on my HOSCO hat, we know that across Europe, there are massive, and I mean massive, manpower shortages to the point where hotels are not opening, restaurants are not offering lunch or dinner service because they can't find the people. But more than just finding the people, they have to convince the young people to go into the industry. And I think a part of that has to do with the resources they learn from. If they see something exciting and something engaging and something unique and something that puts them in the shoes of the person they could be, they get more excited. But if they see a PowerPoint and going through graphs and charts and something that doesn't really resonate to them, they turn off sometimes. And at the same time, the people in the industry need to be motivated to stay in the industry because solution to manpower is about get people in and keep, get people to stay. And how do you get people to stay? You invest in their training. You invest in the people. You invest in the continuous professional development pathways of those people. And you know, there's always a silver lining to everything. COVID has now shown some of these more stubborn companies that we need to train our people, not just to deliver great service, but to keep them. So all in all, I think the timing is right. And I think the innovation has come to the industry, whether we like it or not. Innovation has come to academia in that online learning, I believe, is here to stay and blended formats are key to success. Innovation has come to the industry in that they need to know they have to train their people to retain their people. So that's kind of my, my spiel. But I'll now show you a short presentation about Costco, about Lobster Inc. And then we'll go to LPU, who will say uh, how they made it work at their school. But thank you all for being here. Yeah. So Tina, just let me know you can see everything. And here, here we go. <clears throat> all good? Yes, all good. OK. So why don't we say it's at your fingertips? Because it truly is. Before we came in the mix, this was not available to schools, full stop. The only way to get lobster ink was to be a corporate enterprise client, to buy it at corporate level, and then to give it to your managers. There were also some companies that <clears throat> found a way to offer it in basically combining with training. I think there's even a company in the Philippines that might do this too. But at the end of the day, it was just getting pieces of it, not the whole thing. Our vision was go straight to the source, get the full library of courses and the learning management system and give it to the schools. Yeah. I mean, a bit about Hosco. <clears throat> You know, we are the world's largest hospitality network, and we're like a LinkedIn for hospitality, it's simply said. So our core was always allowing a student and alumni to join this global hospitality network to find a job, to find a connection, or to find learning. And a lot of those members came from our partner schools. That was my role for the last six years, is building up our partner relationships. We have 450 schools around the world who are hospital school partners. But when the pandemic hit, those schools were not telling us, we need jobs for our students, because there were very few jobs for the students or internships. They were saying, we need resources. And that again drove that discussion with Lobster Inc, which led to this very unique partnership. Yeah. On our level, we had 7,000 employers, we have 400 plus partner schools, <clears throat> and now we have these strategic partnerships. One with Lobster Inc, the other one, maybe in a, a different webinar, I can talk about this, with the UNWTO, where we provide platform solutions to governments actually. But on to Lobster Inc, look, our vision was to allow hospitality schools, small and medium-sized businesses, and government organizations, get them to adopt this award-winning training content. So for schools, the idea was let your students have an all-in-one online training resource to support your current curriculum and let it cover everything. As I like to joke, it's kind of a Netflix, and you'll see in a moment. With the Lobster Inc. subscription, everything is there. 200 plus courses, 200 hours of learning, thousands and thousands of lessons. It's all in one. It's not just only front office or only food and beverage, et cetera. For the small and medium businesses, again, as I mentioned in my little spiel at the beginning, offer training incentives to attract new employees, but as well as ensure current employee satisfaction. And with governments, something we're just now starting to explore is allow an unlimited number of potential workers to the industry to access this online learning resource and also help with unemployment issues. One of the areas we're working on in Europe is to work with governments with large unemployment populations, which are sometimes immigrant populations, and allow them to get basic understanding of hospitality and then inspire them to enter the industry. And once again, as I said, because of the manpower shortages, it's a very viable plan right now. Yeah. 
So again, why would we work with Lobster Drink? Well, we really honestly feel like they're the best. You know, in my experience, I've seen many training providers and many certification providers, but the difference has always been the vast majority who I've worked with or known have been a certification provider, which certifies current skills, which is extremely necessary. Groups like the American Hotel Lodging Association or the Institute of Hospitality, it all makes perfect sense to say, I'm a front office manager, I can certify my skills, and here's proof that I know what I know. Perfect. But do they train them? Do they give them the bottom up? Oftentimes they didn't. That's why we like Love Shrink. We were less concerned about promoting certification of young people or talents. We're more about training and helping those uh, talents learn. And again, since they work with really the best and biggest brands in the world, we thought this makes sense in our pivot, if you will, to provide these learning resources to schools. And so what is it? The Lobstering platform is a learning library of thousands of lessons in multiple languages. Now, this was created in partnership with leading subject matter experts. So the Lobstering team has over 100 different production people sitting in Amsterdam in America who are creating content every day. They're filming, they're scripting, and they're partnering with key groups to make sure that what's being presented isn't just their ideas, but global industry standards. Forbes partners with Lobstering. Culinary Institute of America partners with Lobstering. And in fact, Lobstering is owned by Ecolab, which is the largest provider of health and safety sanitation products in the entire world. So anything health and safety related is straight from Ecolab knowledge on Lobstering. That is vastly different than what I've seen in this pandemic of new content creators who basically say, this is a great course because I say it's great. I don't believe that. I think you need to trust the experts. Not only trust in what they know, but trust in how they deliver it. So in these courses, there's practical skills, knowledge, and behavior training delivered in bite-sized learning. You know as well as I do, and if young students are listening, you don't want to sit in a two-hour lecture about health and safety sanitation. And that's probably one of the boring, most boring things you can do. But if you have little pieces here and there delivered in exciting ways, again, it might stick and you might even enjoy what you're learning. Yeah. These industry cred courses cover all aspects of hospitality, as well as culinary and guest service, even spa, and I said health and safety training. And there are currently 1.4 million learners from the world's largest corporate industries on lobstering. So again, proof of product is in the users. And finally, and very importantly, there is a platform management system to help managers track usage, progression, and success. And I believe clients will show more about that later. So again, why do the industry take this? Because it allows for just-in-time learning. They get what they need, exactly what they need, and just as much as they need it. Um, and also just in place. The learning takes place exactly where the learner needs to have that piece of knowledge or skill. What does that mean? Well, in the industry, if you are learning a specific skill to a specific task, you can either take that one course on Lobstream or take a multitude of courses on it. Yeah. And regarding the challenges that Lobstream is solving for the industry, it was about deploying a consistent brand and operation standards. And of course, addressing high staff turnover, understanding the true ROI of training, which is retention, and reducing the growing cost of training. And most importantly, the deskless associates. Again, I am convinced that this blended will be a new normal and we need to teach the students not only to learn online, but how to learn online effectively, because without a doubt, their employers are gonna be adopting some of the same methods when they're in their uh, careers, yeah. So if you look at Lobster Inc, you have these bundles, if you will. <clears throat> you have bundle one, which is called the Hallmark Library. That is by far the most popular that I have seen schools adopting. And based on the survey we've had, it is definitely the one that uh, makes the most sense. It's all related to hospitality management, bar and beverage, events, food and beverage service, front office, hospitality management, standards, housekeeping and information security. When a student has a bundle to this, they get everything. Now, some schools also have culinary programs or tourism programs. That's where the schools can take additional bundles, for example, of the Pro Chef, which is created with the Culinary Institute of America, hand in hand, or Forbes Travel Guide, again, created with Forbes. Some schools have even said, we don't need the hospitality. We would just like to take the Forbes or the Pro Chef. All of these options are available. At the end of the day, we mix it, we match it, we give that subscription to the student in what best makes sense for the curriculum. Yeah. Um, for example, if you are talking about line level training examples, there are many courses in Lobstream which cover the fundamentals. They focus on industry standards, skills, and knowledge to help students uh, start their career as well. 
So F&B service essentials, bartending essentials, coffee professionals, French wines, front office, COVID. I would say around 60% of the content on Lobster Inc. is for this line level, say, basic vocational knowledge of training. But it's not all. There's also management training examples and courses on Lobster Inc. Communication, decision-making, problem-solving, coaching, resolving conflict, um, finance, revenue, F&B, commercial, PCI awareness, social engineering. So certainly this is not just for basic vocational skills. It's also for future managers, which I think fits very well into academic settings as well. So if I am a learner, how I'm learning on Lobster Inc. is through both watching the lessons and doing interactive lesson formats and theories and examples and quizzes. So it's certainly not just choose A, B, C, or D. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Then there's a level of gamification to make sure that they're actually being rewarded for what they complete, not just in 80, 90, 100%, but in a gold, silver, or bronze medal. And a lot of schools have been focusing on that as incentive. And then a certificate of completion, let's be honest, it's a value add. If you as an institution can say, we are offering an official industry certificate of completion for Lobster Inc., as well as your academic credentials, it becomes one of those stackable certifications, which are very, very popular right now in academics. And now more than ever can be offered through this online learning format. So every time a student completes a, completes a bundle of courses on Lobster Inc., they get a certificate of completion. And for example, if you have a really, really, really go get it student, they can do 37 certificates of completion through their one single access on Lobster Inc. They really wanted to. Um, this part I'm gonna skip because I think Heinz will cover more, but it's really about the learning experience about how a student gets on Lobster Inc. Um, and this part, again, Heinz will cover about how you manage it. But most importantly, remember, this is an LMS. It is not just content. It's not just videos. You manage the invitation of the student, the uh, confirmation of the student. You can go in and see the data of the student or the group of students and how they're learning, what they've learned, how well they did, et cetera, at any time. Graphs, charts, analytics, all are built into the system. And frankly, this is one of the reasons why the industry takes it because it is a full-blown integrated LMS that can also have additional content added to it. And finally, there's customization. A lot of schools have said, we want this to look and feel like our own, and you can. You can add the logo, you can change the URL, you can change the coloring to perfectly match your school's branding to make it feel like the learning system the students are using was built by you in-house, yeah. So we've had over 30 schools around the world adopt Lobster Inc. And frankly, we've been very successful in the Philippines, I must say. LPU led the way without a doubt, but you also, we also had JIB adopted in, uh, in Mindanao down there. We had Southland College adopted also. And just recently, we also had Benil uh, take on Lobster Inc. Um, so certainly the, the word is spreading. Um, but how to get it done is really a question, I think, for uh, Heinz and, and uh, a little about the answer. But what I'm seeing are two models in making Lobster Inc. work. Model one is clearly, it's like a lab fee or it's integrated into any kind of resources students have, like buying a book, simple as that. Model two, which I think is perhaps something to explore in the Philippines is working with CHED or any other organizations to offer institutional uh, partnerships, for example, to many of the public institutions, because clearly it's a different model than private. Regardless, we wanna find the funding channels to bring these resources to the schools. In Europe, we have something called Erasmus Plus funding, and we're now having discussions at European level to group schools together. For example, all the schools from, the, from Portugal or from Germany or from Austria, and make a bid to the European Union to have lobster funded for those schools. And we think we have a very good chance at this because it ticks so many boxes in requirements. Online learning, it has uh, <clears throat> definitely a focus on the industry and something that can be integrated very easily by schools. So finally, I'm gonna give you a short video walkthrough of the platform and then I pass it on to uh, Lou. So. Learn, apply, revisit. Three simple actions that describe the Lobster Inc. learning experience. Let's take a closer look. As a learner, you will access the platform either through single sign-on or secure email invitation. Upon sign-in, you are directed to the Explore page, which displays the learning content available to your organization. The Learn page has all of the content that is designed to include, including both individual courses. 
Learning Paths are a series of courses combined in a particular order to deliver role-specific training. Select a learning path to view the individual courses and get more information. No hablo espanol? Not a problem. You can change language at any time. Start your course. The clean, distraction-free interface allows you to focus on the task at hand, while the progress bar below indicates where you are in the course and what comes next. But learning on Lobster Inc. isn't limited to just video. Different types of interactive lessons make learning more engaging and build your knowledge at key stages throughout a course. Ready to test what you've learned? Theory assessments provide real-time feedback and serve as summative reviews of the key learning outcomes. Okay, wait, was that a perfect score? Medals are unlocked with each assessment, gamifying the experience and inspiring better performance. Badges recognize progress and are issued on the successful completion of each course. Certificates are then awarded for the successful completion of all courses in the learning path. Ready for the next course? The Lobster Inc. platform intuitively recommends what to do next, whether that's encouraging you to further your learning journey or revisit concepts that you're not 100% sure of. That's a quick run through of the Lobster Inc. learner experience, concise, interactive, and job relevant learning that's accessible whenever you need it. Okay. So I think you understand pretty clearly uh, uh, what it is, why we decided to work with, uh, uh, with Lobster Inc and um, a bit about how it works. But I guess to expand on that, I now pass to LPU. Um, but thank you everyone for being here. If you have any interest, obviously in Lobster Inc afterwards, uh, Tina will be sharing my contact details. When you email me, it's just john, J-O-H-N at hosco.com, very simple. But thank you all. And I really hope we can support uh, your need for blended learning in the future. And thank you for the opportunity. Okay, thank you, John, for the very nice presentation. Uh, you did that go beyond 20 minutes as uh, you envisioned. So thank you, but it was quite a lot of information that we had. Uh, we now go to, uh, uh, what's this, uh, another, from the idea of having a learning platform to, uh, to having somebody actually use it. Now we go on to uh, Dr. Beth Aragon. You might have had quite a number, an array of programs to choose from. Nobody was prepared for the pandemic and uh, you were doing most probably all face-to-face, -face, all uh, uh, materials that were uh, prepared by faculty members. So your examinations were done by faculty members. You were doing assessments and people had to be in the classroom to actually do the learning and uh, because of the pandemic uh, quick thinking came out and there were a lot of uh, what products that were out there you must have done like a lot of cost benefit analysis pricing was a consideration availability and uh, credibility must have been quite an issue as well for you so maybe uh beth can you just walk us through your uh decision making process and uh as the visionary the leader uh, that's stated in the uh, poster that uh, we uh, gave out to everyone else here. Uh, tell us, because I know that uh, for LPU, having the big numbers come with a price. Uh, you've got a lot of students, you've got a lot of what accreditation, both local and national. You've got a center of excellence at that. And you have to make sure that whatever you put in your program is something that should uh, build on whatever uh, accomplishments you've had to date. And so walk us through that uh, considerations you've made. And I give you the virtual floor right now and including the screen, Beth. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mam you know, it feels so different uh, this <laughs> afternoon. And uh, of course, I'm very um, honored to share our experience with Lobster Inc. But first, allow me to greet all our participants from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Mabuhay at magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. And I believe we are equally represented. Of course, a big bulk of our participants uh, would come from the academy. We also have uh, industry practitioners attending this uh, forum, our tent, and the Tourism Industry Board Foundation 
Innovation Incorporated webinars. We also have people from the government. I believe we have uh, from, from Commission of Higher Education and, of course, from Technical Education Skills Development Authority. And, of course, we also have students. So each of the sectors are well represented. And, of course, uh, we're very happy. Like what you said, it's a major you know, decision point that we had to 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 make um, since last year, and um, it's very relatable because I know that a lot of our participants attendees this afternoon were uh, confronted with that big decision to pivot last year, and at the same time, we normally as administrators would encounter a lot of uh, proposals landing on our desk. Mm -hmm. And so decisions have to be made and the uh, cons cons considerations have to be factored in in terms of a lot of factors. And of course, I'm very pleased to share our experience with Lobster Inc. And allow me to share my screen right now. Yes. Okay. And so, po kayong lahat? I hope that uh, all of you are doing great. And um, of course, you're very much eager to, to listen to uh, the presentation that uh, we have uh, from Lyceum of the Philippines University College of International Tourism and Hospitality Management. So this is about best in-class online hospitality training at your fingertips. And of course, I've heard about the Lobster Inc you know, years back, but, you know, I always have this impression that number one, um, though it's a very good um, platform, it's for the industry. And um, another um, misconception that I had then was, um, yes, we do want it. It's international when you, when you, you know, try to associate uh, the brand with Lobster Inc. Of course, uh, there's very good integration of what we're doing in the academy, of course, with the industry. However, of course, one major consideration is the pricing. And so allow me to, you know, to be more precise on how we've made that decision in LPU. So of course, the first step that we have to consider is the needs analysis, especially last year. Initially, our um, impression is that, oh, we have to get um, a platform that has uh, very good content. And then at the same time, that would address, you know, our needs for the online learning, you know, very, um, very fast and accurate at that because last year, of course, uh, you know, no institutions could claim that they were prepared that they have, you know, everything that they can use at their hands. And so uh, even we have that uh, roadmap for online learning, we cannot right away create a content that is uh, accurate, that is, um, you know, of high quality of, you know, conforming with the standards of the industry and that, you know, we can really, you know, uh, attest that it's really something that is efficient and effective for our learners. And so as we, of course, develop our own modules, we were trying to consider a lot of options already. And so we said, we cannot just reinvent the wheel just like that. I'm sure there's a solution to that. And so we started to analyze our needs, the needs of our students, the needs of our teachers. We also have to consider our current infrastructure and of course the management directions that we have. So there's a lot of talk about you know, how we would operationalize things. And of course we would meet constantly um, I think the first one was um, we had uh, a presentation with uh, John, and um, he gave us a walkthrough of uh, how Lobster Inc. would address our needs. And then from there, we, we, we had to, uh, to, of course, meet with our team and at the same time, look at you know, the current system that we have, whether integration is possible. Um, of course, we, do not, we, we cannot really claim that this is in replacement of the system that we had in LPU. This is actually a supplement to what we are already doing, but a supplement that is well accepted, a supplement also that would address the standards concern, and at the same time, that would make our stakeholders um, pleased with the decisions that we make. So after the needs analysis, you know, we've, you know, we've met a number of times, and of course, um, Lobster Inc. gave us a trial version now, in the trial version that was given, we had to make sure that it's passed on to the faculty members who are teaching various courses, the chairpersons, and of course, myself. We had to run through the trial version and then try to make an assessment whether this would work for us. And uh, of course, uh, initially, we were very much impressed with the content, 
of course with the videos everything is there and so as we said oh this is manna from heaven we're thinking about you know having a video of our faculty doing things and then of course we're trying to make sure that everything all the equipments all the ingredients are there but you know it's already you know ready made for us to to utilize and so the trial version we had to evaluate them okay in fact uh, there were two or three folds evaluation that took place and uh, from there um, we had to meet again with uh, with John, of course, and um, how do we make things happen? And um, just like any other institution, there are several um, factors that we need to consider. Of course, um, LPU is very cost sensitive. We do not want to pass on too much cost to our students. We also have an existing LMS, which is called My LPU. And so, how will it, you know, who, will it uh, merge, for example, with with Lobster Inc. And so, after that, we met uh, many times, and of course, we also had to involve the other campuses. And um, I think uh, Cavite will soon follow, and then the rest of the LPU campuses, because after we've evaluated the whole. Uh, the whole uh, thing as uh, we gave them to our faculty. And so it's a very good review. And so, um, of course, we had to consider the responsiveness of uh, Lobster Inc. with our curricula. Of course, uh, when, you, when you talk about Lobster Inc., their methodology underpins every aspect of our curriculum design. So how did we do this? So number one, we had to map Okay, the Lobster Inc. content, okay, the different pathways that they offer according to program, because we offer, um, of course, uh, international uh, tourism management. We also offer hospitality management with various specializations. We had to look at our per year level mapping. So from first year to fourth year, we also have included internship. Initially, internship was out of the picture. But we really had this actually took the longest time for us to, to develop because we, we would like to, I think the, the proper term here is to optimize because subscription is good for a year. And so we had to go to our go back to our drawing board and ensure that you know the one year that would be spent in subscription to Lobster Inc. would be maximized by the students. And so we had to um, look at the positioning of our subjects, in which case for a year, our students would be able to cut through at least two, at the minimum, two subjects or modules. So meaning to say that uh, in a subscription of one year, they'll be able to take um, its tag to three um, courses or three subjects already. But of course, since we got the hallmark feature of Lobster Inc., the students are free to explore any other courses yeah, that they choose and that they would feel they're very comfortable they would like to learn so you know the content is there they just have to make sure and we've made an orientation about lobster ink how to utilize it properly so of course we want to utilize it to our advantage and so this is actually the first step and uh, we were given the list of the courses, the list of the uh, learning pathways of Lobster Inc. And that is something that we have to look and um, you know, try to map in our current curricula. Of course, we have identified subjects. Okay, we're in um, the learning pathways would be very relevant. And so we were able to, for example, adopt Lobster Inc. in subjects such as um, fundamentals in food service operations, housekeeping operations, kitchen essentials, even business communications for tourism and hospitality, as well as internship. Of course, we do not want to, to duplicate the subjects. And so we had to look, um, you know, based on the, what we have per year level. And so it's an extensive mapping that, that we did before we, we had to say, yes, this is something that would work because, of course, our students, uh, we want to um, make sure that they're you know, um, their value for money is uh, optimized. And so we had to look at it this way and uh, for us to be able to ensure that it would work with the system that we have. 
of course another um, factor in the decision making is so the learning library of course uh, this is uh, very impressive because there are over 250 courses that cover you know all the operational aspects of hospitality training and um, of course we've utilized english okay but it's also available in multiple languages and um, there are learning paths so the learning paths like um, you know um, building blocks for learning so in the industry you can take a look at how it's being built and i think that is also highly applicable with the academic setting there's a combination also of hard skills and soft skills to gain complete understanding of all the modules that we have and um, of course as uh, an institution we are able to manage the appropriate duration of learning journeys through specific integrations but of course we had to blend all of this learning library with the existing lpu content meaning to say our um, faculty members are still developing um, modules we call, we call them course instructional developers but along the course of developing those materials for us we have already integrated the content of lobster inc and so later on i'm going to show you how integration was done okay so this hallmark content Okay, as I was saying, as presented by, uh, by, by John earlier, for example, in bar and beverage, you have 57 courses. So there are 57 topics. Now, if um, in our curriculum, we have bar and beverage uh, subject, then we have to be able to take a look at these 57 courses and to be able to choose which amongst these 57 courses would be you know, adoptable and uh, whether these 57 courses would be built in 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 that uh, particular subject or course the same manner with the other with the other uh, courses that we have in the hallmark uh, content so we chose this because you know looking at this curriculum spread this would address this would address a number of uh, subjects across across different uh, programs that we have and of course as i mentioned i always say optimization is the key here because the subscription is good for one year and so we try to monitor for example if i'm a student i have to make sure that um i have at least a minimum of two to three subjects okay and at the same time the students are taught how they can fully maximize all of this uh, contents in the lobster ink now the the platform is very interactive when we say interactive, it doesn't just um, you know focus on content. It um, though the content has um, you know very th these are actually very good materials. In fact, um, very impressive if you look at the video content because that's initially the the thing that we would like to capture with Lobster Inc. We want good videos and at the same time up to standard. When you talk about industry standard, you know something that is not questionable and. Um, you know, we, we had to look for ways on how we can get that. So that's very impressive. But apart from that, um, it is a platform we're in. Um, they have included practical assessments. When we say practical assessments, such as objective uh, quizzes, you know, type of exams, but um, it touches on different competencies of the students. And at the same time, of course, um, you know, the purpose, I just want to emphasize that the purpose of this interactive lessons is to provide immediate feedback to learners. So if I'm a learner and then I took um, certain um, courses here and then at the end of each course or a practical assessment, then I'm going to get feedback whether I'm already competent for that particular module and that I can proceed to the next one. So, you know, it's, it's actually something that, uh, you know, we cannot right away um, do in our existing platform. So there are theory assessments, so there are several manuals. And of course, on the part of uh, the management, we have management portal, and then we have real-time reporting. So there's a very good dashboard that can be produced at the end of uh, you know, the module. Now, the lessons are formatted in a very interactive uh, manner. Of course, you have documents that you can access. You have dialogue, you have hotspots. So this includes video demonstrations. You have a combination, you have visual choices, you have different process process recipes, you have simulation, you have interactive videos, and all of them have unique features. And these features are, you know, for, for young students that we have in the academe, I think this is something that would really entice them to um, appreciate online learning. 
And um, this is something that we really appreciate uh, with Lobster Inc. platform, the interactivity of the lessons formats and, and the contents. So they also feature what we call a learning path. So a learning path is actually a series of individual courses purposefully arranged in a specific order to present the appropriate level of training for a particular job function. So you would see here the elevation of the different job function. And so as a manager, you can actually plot and plan according to this learning paths that the Lobster Inc. would give you. It's easily updatable. So learning paths speed up onboarding and ensure a consistent standard of operational capability across departments. So we, we always thought that it's only for industry, but this is very useful also for the academe. Another thing that, uh, that made us decide to take on Lobster Inc. is of course the guided implementation. So of course, when we um, initially had these talks with uh, John, we were um, there were a lot of questions floating, and so they were fast to give us um, responses. And then we had to share with uh, with him, and of course to the team that you know these are actually the limitations of the institutions. I'm sure you you know uh, that uh, each of the institutions have different structure. You have. Um, you know, different approving bodies, you have a different way of putting into cost, building them, um, you know, in your laboratory, um, you know, um, fees and uh, uh, lecture fees. And so this has to be made understood by our partner. And, and um, he was very quick to accommodate us. And in terms of onboarding our students in the LMS, it was, you know, accurate and, and fast. So the only thing that we did was to orient um, our faculty and students, but that was actually done by the manager. So we constantly do um, orientation and reorientation with faculty and, and students, especially with the students, because we're now on modular um, arrangement in terms of the delivery of our instruction. So every module, so we make it a point to orient and reorient faculty and students regarding the, the code that will be given to them. How are you going to learn? Uh, you know, how do you maximize the use of Lobster Inc.? And then what's included in terms of uh, availing it for this SEM and then transitioning to next SEM because, you know, one year can, can happen so fast. And so we had to make sure that the students would remember that and also the faculty members. But in terms of uh, onboarding, I would say that it was it has been um, seamless if there are, you know, questions coming from both ends of faculty and students, they were able to um, answer all of these concerns. And I think one key is um, if you're trying to envision getting Lobster Inc., uh, you know, uh, soon, then uh, you have to be able to, you know, um, get a good manager. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, we have a very good manager, um, uh, of course, with Chef Heinz uh, Pelayo. So he, under he understands everything from step one to step 10. And so that is something that uh, we've been constantly doing. In fact, the utilization percentage is high. And of course, we attribute that with the integration approach that we have. As I mentioned, we have an existing um, learning portal, which is by LPU. So all of our modules are uploaded. We have the complete modules of all our subjects, GE professional subjects in our my LPU. And in this modules, we have integrated Lobster Inc. So here you would see that in terms of training, Okay, you already have, we already have identified the, the topics or the modules, and then we've anchored it, we've connected it with Lobster Inc. And it's not only in training, but we were also able to connect them with assessment, which is very important. Like for example, here for midterm examination, so a good 50% of that would be coming from the midterm portfolio, which includes Lobster Inc. assessment compilation. So they have to be able to submit and compile the following and then have a screenshot of the scores and medals in the theoretical assessment from Lobster Inc. And then the scores would be, of course, divided into your midterm grade. So it's highly customizable according to your own system and your, your grading protocols in your institution. So, but, you know, this is one way that we have integrated our approach, not just in training, but more importantly, in the assessment. And so the percentage of utilization is high. And then at the same time, we're able to really leverage on the kind of evaluation that our faculty and students would have at the end of each uh, module. So that's how we do the, the integration. And um, 
Of course, um, one thing that we like is this action-oriented reporting. So there are analytics, there are dashboards, you know, there are charts at the end of, if I'm the teacher, I'll be very glad to see that, you know, a number of my students have finished this particular, you know, training module under Lobster Inc. And they were able to um, take the assessment and you see the scores, you know, you will see everything in, in that dashboard. And so you don't really have to record it, you know, manually, but everything will come out with you in a complete dashboard that would make, um, you know, action-oriented reporting easier. So if there's a need for you to, to reteach certain parts of the lessons to emphasize on things that the majority of the students would have not gone, would have not done correctly, then you'll be able to do that. In fact, they can actually make self-assessment of their own performances. So the principle of engage, progress, and perform, this is actually highly evident in, in the Lobster Inc. platform. And um, of course, in terms of monitoring, as I mentioned, um, we can act actively, proactively manage learners by easily identifying the levels that influence their progress. And um, these metrics are downloadable. And then at the same time, um, this can answer your need in terms of uh, data analytics, in terms of uh, decision making later on. And so this is very valuable for us, the learning management and reporting system that that they have because here you can actually track course progression and um, what are the different barriers to, to progress. You can actually you know, download all the data sets, even you know, capture the practical assessments and the different scores. And um, you, can, you can also issue and uh, download um, learner certification. So everything is there. Of course, you just explore the, the manage overview page um, in the platform. And then learning contents are designed by industry leaders. This is something very important for us. And knowing that the developers of this uh, content are coming, all coming from the industry, it's being used by their people, it's being used in terms of decision making, whether they, they have to progress or they, they can be promoted, whether they're competent or not. So we are able to, you know, put to rest our um, apprehension in terms of the quality of the content. So the consultants are experts in their fields and in terms of creating training, as well as the assessment of processes. And of course, we, we just have to revisit our own academic objectives every step of the way. What is it that we want our students to learn? What is it that we envision them to perform? And at the same time, we are applying the principle of learning, applying, and of course, revisiting for us to be more grounded. Another feature is the practical assessment. I think uh, John was able to show this earlier that if I am a student, I will be very happy to get badges. And then um, you have to, they, they will be able to see uh, how they pair off in terms of the assessment, practical and theoretical assessment, and then their levels of completion. And then, of course, as a teacher, you'll be able to manage and see the achievements of your, of your students. At the end of the day, they get their certificate of completion, okay? And this is an added value because, of course, we want our students to bring with them not just the LPU diploma, but, of course, we're talking about now about um, cross-scaling, upscaling, reskilling, and so certification, micro-credentialing. So this is actually very valuable for them. So this signifies that they have completed all the theoretical and uh, practical assessments relating, for example, to a particular course. And this gives them an added value. So if they're really that bright and if they really want to maximize the use of the lobster ink within that one year, and they, they can have like, uh, they can generate more than 30, I think 37 certificates of uh, completion. And so that that is something that would add value. But more than that, again, we're not really eliminating, you know, what should be done in school. So again, uh, just a disclaimer, we're not going to replace, it's not going to replace uh, the system that we have, but it's a very good way for us to be able to gauge the progress of our students and at the same time for us to be able to deliver quality contents in terms of instruction. So in closing, of course, why did we decide to choose Lobster Inc? In fact, um, prior to you know, going direct with Lobster Inc., we uh, have encountered a number of providers who approach us about Lobster Inc., but those are actually parts, you know, they, they are offering the program in parts. And so we, we are actually wondering whether we can go direct and then we can get the whole Hallmark uh, courses 
of the, the platform. And true enough, that is actually possible. And so now we are sure that we're giving good value to the students in terms of the cost, in terms of you know, the learning experience. So why Lobster Inc? Because um, they have deep skills and experience. Of course, they use proactive technology-based uh, approach and it's aligned with the industry-based based, uh, practices and standards because it was developed by them. They have consistent processes that has been tested throughout the years. They have very good knowledge management and service visibility for anything that, uh, that would happen. We know that we can count, of the, count on them in terms of helping us or assisting us to, to troubleshoot. But so far, nothing, uh, nothing uh, major um, that happened um, since last year, uh, since this year. And strong support and quality consistent service delivery and reliability. Of course, they have very good road, uh, they have very good portfolio. And uh, technology foresight and innovation responsiveness, meaning say they constantly um, upgrade and um, um, update their, uh, their content and as well as the uh, assessment processes. Value for money because, um, I would say value for money because um, um, we have a number, we have a big, um, number of students in LPU, and um, I think the utilization last time was 3,500, and it's going to be um, increased in the coming uh, months, okay? And so it's value for money because uh, I think uh, they gave us like a tier pricing based on the number of students. And um, of course, with uh, LPU, um, if it's a multi-system approach, then that that is also good in terms of uh, negotiating for the cost value for money also because you know um instead of uh, getting parts of it i believe we were able to get the the full pie and then may, make use of it you know in the best possible way that can benefit our students so again optimization and the last one is fit for use in the lpu system it um th this is something that we had to to recheck all the time if it if it would fit our um system because um, no matter how good um, this process are, if it doesn't fit our LPU system, I, I don't think uh, we can operationalize things. And more than that, of course, the student experience, of course, we place the, the highest value with the student uh, experiences because we want our students to be able to experience consistent, relevant, accessible, and flexible um, learning, especially um, since last year and uh, so far, we had very good feedback coming from both the students and uh, the faculty members. So where are we now? We are actually still on the evaluation phase. So we've done half of it already because we're done with the first semester. Uh, since we offered Lobster Inc., we've integrated Lobster Inc. in our system. And now we're on our second semester, so completing our one year with them. And so we're still constantly evaluating, again, going back to the learning outcomes, and then at the same time, checking whether we can optimize it better. But since we have already added that concept in terms of the practicum certifications, I think uh, we were able to really maximize and the students were able to see the value of uh, why we've chosen this particular um, platform for them. So once again, maraming maraming salamat mo sa inyong lahat for listening. And thank you very much, Tim Fee, for giving us this opportunity to talk about our experience with Lobster Inc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Beth. You have actually walked us through a very difficult uh, journey you made in finally selecting this particular program. I think uh, as the leader, you had to ask the most difficult questions and you had to find the answers, both from the LPU side as well as with John, because you had to make sure that uh, everything was acceptable for your faculty, for your students, as well as for your admin. You had to be answerable to everyone. And John was the one who had had to carry all the answers for you and you had to make sure that these answers were uh, something that were receptive and I guess there was some negotiation that you had to do as well and maybe this is something that we'll ask I saw a few questions already I've got one in Google link I've got uh, another one on the chat and now we go to the most difficult part because once you've made a decision it's not as if it's going to add on right away to uh, the things that you have. Uh, everything is going to be uh, smooth sailing. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, as the manager, 
you were very lucky that you had somebody very young and very techy with you uh, who was willing to uh, respond to the many emails. Because yesterday I asked him, did you have a separate email just for lobster concerns? He said, no, I was just using my ordinary email. I can just imagine you know, when people get into a learning management uh, platform, you've got, oh, I miss my, I, I don't remember my password. I don't know this, etc. You know, there's a lot of handholding. And so, Heinz, walk uh, uh, there. Uh, uh, let me just get put, uh, John. And this is not yet a question and answer, but I, I guess the questions that were asked by Beth were very difficult, uh, John, but more so when uh, you got to the nitty gritty of things uh, as to the implementation. And mind you, the implementation might be different from one school versus the other. And it's not as if everything is just in black and white, you know, there's a one 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 road to follow each one would have their own unique uh, requirements and so let's now look listen to uh chef heinz who's been raring he's been he has more than 100 slides i believe to share with you <laughs> because he actually did actually share also that he did a part of his uh uh, formative evaluation is to actually require a, stu a group of students to do research on this. And this is something that you may want to share as well with us. Let's let's stop on the uh, the questions can be, uh, we'll we entertain the questions after we have uh, spoken with everybody here. So let's give the virtual floor as well as a screen to Chef Heinz right now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. I hope you're seeing my screen right now. So yes, as, you've seen, uh -uh. Just as you've seen and heard earlier, I think I, there's nothing much to talk about, but I'll be talking more on what happened on the ground during the implementation of the Lobster Inc. with the LPU experience. So basically, we've subscribed to the Lobster Inc. Hallmark Learning Library, We're in we have the following courses, bar and beverage, hospitality standards, hospitality management, events, front office, food and beverage service, information security, as well as housekeeping. Okay, so I won't go into those because um, this was already discussed by John earlier. Um, and you might be wondering, in terms of standards, these are actually the brands that are actually using Lobster Inc. So as part of our research, one of the things that we've um, discussed was in terms of information quality, okay? And Lobster Inc. was able to provide the students with great information that are up to date, that are relevant to the courses, that are relevant to their learning needs, because these are actually the standards that are being practiced and being used in the training of the following brands, including Marriott, Hilton, Mandarin Oriental, Marco Polo, and others. Now, earlier, John was also able to show you those schools that have already adopted Lobster Inc. And we're proud to say that LPU was the first university to adopt Lobster Inc. into its curricula. Okay. Now, you might be wondering what would be the advantage of this to the faculty. Number one, it's very easy to learn. Uh, yesterday, Director Tina was talking to me and she was asking me, uh, so how was the train the trainer with your faculty? It actually just took about 30 minutes to an hour to actually train the faculty. It's that easy to implement and to tell them how to use Lobster Inc. and how to enroll their students. Okay. Another thing is, I've seen one question already regarding this one. It's actually customizable to one's needs. So later we would address this. How is it customizable to one's needs? So I'll be showing you some of the pathways that John were uh, shown us or sent to us. And from there, I'll show you how we actually planned to embed it in our course. Now, if you were wondering, um, does the manager need to actually teach the faculty or the trainers to uh, how to implement Lobster Inc. There's actually an embedded course within Lobster Inc., which is entitled Manager on Board Course, which will actually be a fast course telling them how to properly manage and use Lobster Inc. So that's on the side of the faculty. How about on the side of the students? On the side of the students, it's also very easy registration is very easy we just give a code to the students okay and then from there um they would log into a specific site and then input that 
Second, if there are new users, they would just need to click on the, that they are a new user and register their account. It's as easy as making your social media account. But for tracing purposes, we've done a very specific naming convention for them. So it's last name underscore first name so that it would be easy for us to trace that this is the student from this section. Because if we would allow them to register as Superman123, it would be very difficult to trace who that student is. So this is this was one of our implementation guide when we implemented it with to our students. Now, if you're wondering what if um, there's another module for another period, there's also a very easy way to transfer them from one learning path to another learning path. So what you just need to do is give them the enrollment code, make sure that they click on that they already have an account and log into their Lobster Inc. So it's that easy for the student to register for a new account. And if they have to transfer from one learning pathway to another learning pathway, if they're changing sections, okay, it will also be easy, just as easy as logging in to your account. Okay. Now, earlier I've been telling you John provided us a list, a long list of learning path, learning courses that they can use as integration to the curriculum or to the syllabi. Now, as um, educators, we want to fully utilize Lobster Inc. And because learning pathways have an end certification, we opted to fully utilize all the learning paths that are related to a specific course. As you can see here on my slide, there are a specific number of courses, specific number of lessons, as well as specific number of hours. So how did we um, plan or embed this into the curriculum? So here's an example. Um, we have here a food and beverage course, which is entitled Fundamentals of Food and Beverage Service. So you will see that we've chosen two pathways, okay? And these two pathways have different lessons, okay? But these two certificates, actually, one has fewer lessons as compared to the other ones. So we've provided them both the certificate because they get to get two certificates with this one. And then we've also computed how many hours based on Lobster Inc. would be utilized during their asynchronous classes. So instead of making our own videos for the lessons of the students, we've provided Lobster Inc. as a supplemental learning videos for them, which they, they can utilize during their asynchronous classes. So we've, used, uh, we've fully utilized our synchronous classes for interactive learning with our students and for the review of the videos, which are set to standards of the industry, we've utilized those of Lobster Inc. So you can see here how we've um, aligned it with the food and beverage service course, with the front office course. We've also aligned it with tourism and hospitality marketing, with the integration of sales professional, as well as MICE. So if you get the full list of the learning pathways from John, if you plan to subscribe, then you can plan your own pathways, your own certificates that you can provide to your students based on your needs. So it's really customizable, as I've said earlier on. So it's very easy to choose which pathways or which courses you're going to integrate into your curricula or into your syllabus. And Earlier, Dean Beth was able to show you some of the reports that um, can be generated from Lobster Inc. And we're proud to say that based on this quick statistics, we actually have 3,545 active users. This was before the start of the semester. You might be wondering, oh, how come it's low during August and September? I'm actually happy with this one because there were no classes 
during August and September. So what does this indicate? It indicates that our students were using Lobster Inc. for the advancement of their learning on their own because there was no class during August and September. So you can see here that even if they don't have classes, they were learning on their own and choosing their own lessons to supplement their learning. So it's also an advantage because it's like Netflix. You choose whatever you want. You can give them a specific pathway to choose, but because it's a one-year subscription, if they think, oh, I want to learn about latte art or coffee art because there's a topic on coffee art or if they're non if they're tourism majors and they want to learn about bartending they can do that because everything is accessible in the platform that's what's great about the platform you can choose whatever learning courses or learning pathways you want aside from those that were mandated by the school the college or the university okay and you can see here, we have a lot of gold, silver, and bronze medals, and those that have mastered their lessons. And you can see high initial attempts to pass. It just took them 1.9 uh, attempts to pass the examinations. And what does this show? This shows how effective the learning um, materials are in Lobster Inc. And as um, managers, of learning of the students, this is a great indication to us that Lobster Inc. is working. It is indeed working for the overall development of our students. You can see here the average high score and average overall score of the students. It doesn't even go below 70. And it's very um, nice to know that there's a 91% average high score for the month of October. And this was the start. This was the start of the semester, October 2021. So even at the start of the semester, just imagine, we're just starting then when I uh, downloaded this information, a lot of students were already uh, showing high scores in their assessment in Lobster Inc. Now, you might be wondering in terms of system quality or system requirement, oh, it might be difficult to use Lobster Inc. You can see here, the required hardwares are very um, minimal, as well as the supported computer operating systems. The firewall settings are also very minimal, as well as it is supported by iOS, as well as Android. So you can use your desktop, your laptop, your tablets, your cell phones to access Lobster Inc. Anywhere in the world, wherever you are, you can access Lobster Inc. Now, aside from information quality, we also have um, system quality. Now we're going to service quality. And what's great about Lobster Inc. is that they also provide additional support for faculty. And this is the website that you can go to if you want to learn more about um, authentication and placement, learning as well as exploring learning and achievement as well as your manager roles. You can go here or there's a chat box below Lobster Inc. where in the manager can contact directly Lobster Inc. Aside from this, there's also additional support as well for the learners. Okay, so if they want, if they have so many questions, um, like this, how do I change the platform language? How do I edit my profile? They have a learning, uh, they have um, a URL where you can visit for additional support of the learners. So in terms of technology acceptance model, this was the, our research that we've conducted with our students in terms of information quality, system quality, and service quality. We've shown the relationship of this in terms of satisfaction, and this research is still ongoing. You can see that there we have a very high um, satisfaction rating in terms of the effectiveness of Lobster Inc. in their learning, in the performance of the system, with the interaction with Lobster Inc., as well as their overall satisfaction. In terms of continuance intention, do they plan to use Lobster Inc. in the future if given the chance? Yes, I wish to use Lobster Inc. 
in the future. I plan to use it. I intend to give recommendations to my friends. Okay, so this shows a great, a uh, high continuance intention in terms of use to our students. And lastly, another important thing is in terms of the internal belief of the students, do they think that it had a net benefit in terms of learning efficiency, acquisition of new knowledge and skills, innovativeness, problem solving capabilities, information analyzation and evaluation, as well as quality decision making. These were the responses of the students. They believe that Lobster Inc. helped improve their learning efficiency as well as it helped them gain new knowledge, help them acquire new skills, help them come up with innovative ideas and other that I have not included in this slide. So basically, you've seen how we've implemented it, how the students and the faculty are responding to Lobster Inc. Um, so later on, during the question and answer, we can provide you more information about how we've utilized Lobster Inc. So this ends my presentation. I turn you back to Director Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Heinz. You've walked us through uh, quite a number of uh, operational concerns. Uh, were there challenges uh, among faculty members, especially um, for those who were, uh, let's say, digital immigrants, uh, my age group? <laughs> Actually, Director Tina, there was none because it's oh. as easy as going through your Netflix. Okay. Um, the, the common encounter that we had was only during the registration okay. because we were strict with the registration of the students okay. because sometimes the students create two accounts. Oh. So it's the role of the manager to check if there are um, double accounts. So if you are a very small uh, group of users, it would yes. be very easy. Yes. But just imagine... The 3,900 yes, I know, <laughs> accounts I know. that I, okay. I managed last uh -huh. semester, but uh -huh. it's doable. It's doable. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We've got quite a number of questions already on my uh, Google link, as well as one that we had uh, in the uh, chat. Uh, this was from Dr. Pharma, who actually, uh, Sharma, who actually can modules be customized as per the need and syllabus. I think this is something that you responded. You can actually align this to what you need based on your syllabus. You can just select what particular topic to match and it, you can actually go minimum and the, go maximum. maximum. Uh, uh, some schools want to be unique. You don't want just to have the minimum. And so you've added quite maybe a number of uh, additional uh, competencies to uh, at least make yourself different from the other schools as well. So that's good question. Oh, again, one of the remember the Paul question we had uh, John earlier. What was your major consideration? Uh, somebody's asking about cost. I think this is you know Filipinos are very price sensitive, and uh, you know coming from an American where one dollar is fifty pesos <laughs> equivalent, or how much is it in your in your currency? What is the difference in the Polish uh, currency to Philippine peso? Is it well, also that big? I, I did anticipate this question. I, I <laughs> Prices unless asked, but I have been on enough webinars to know the question would come. So I am going to share my screen just to give complete transparency on on costs because I think it's important for everybody here. Okay. Um, and I've taken a. You have it in pesos. I did it in pesos just this morning, so based on the currency exchange rates. Okay. So, uh, you know, as Heinz and uh, Dean Beth mentioned, it's this per student fee, like like buying a book. And so the rack rate, if you will, is 5,700 Philippine pesos for that one year access for okay. each student. But what's really important to mention, and LPU did this very well, is setting the one year access date at the right time. You, you don't wanna set it in the summer when everyone's on vacation because they lose two or three months. And so what we do on our end is we ask the school, how many licenses do you need and when should they activate? So for example, schools I'm talking to right now say, well, we want to activate for spring semester. Fine. We can sign up, do all the paperwork with Lobster Inc. now, but make the student access start in January or February. So they get the full year access. Okay. So yeah, so 5,700 Philippine pesos is the rack rate. Now, obviously, LPU mentioned is that they have multiple campuses at high volumes. Clearly, we provide those kind of uh, volume discounts. 
but it starts at 500 users. If you feel in all years of your uh, universities, year one, two, three, or four, you have enough need for 500 learners, then it drops to 4,500 Philippine pesos, around 80 euros. And then again, very honestly, LPU at such a high level was able to have an even better rate because of the very high volume of users, you know? And that's for the Hallmark Library. You know, as the survey showed today, the vast majority of interest here is for hospitality. That's a perfect fit for hospitality. But don't forget, there is also the Culinary Institute of America programs, and they're very high level, and they're done with the CIA. So whereas when a student learns from Lobster Inc., they get the Lobster Inc. certificate. With CIA, they get the CIA certificate. So some schools like that extra branding from the Culinary Institute of America. But frankly, some don't. Mm -hmm. I was talking with our partners like Le Cordon Bleu, and mm -hmm. they're like, no, we don't want the CIA because they're competitors, right? Yeah. But other ones see it as an advantage. So it's, it's really up to the school in terms of marketing and promotion, mm -hmm. as well as content, what bundle they think is best. Okay. But you know, here you have transparency on, on pricing and obviously yeah. when- uh, But if you take a look at this, it's 4,500 per year. Uh, if you divide it by 10 months, because you have two months uh, break, that you you're you're like spending 450 pesos per per month and if you're able to maximize assign as mentioned by uh chef heinz earlier on they actually made sure that they did a curriculum mapping of all the uh, available titles that you have and made sure that you maximize it let me just ask you let me count the ways uh heinz of the 2000 how many titles did you have in your uh, library uh john 2000 yeah, lessons yeah uh, lessons 200 courses, 250 courses, 2,500 lessons. 2,500 yeah. lessons. How many lessons were you able to put in into the program, uh, Chef Heinz? Actually, Director Tina, you know, what, what we've utilized is the use of the pathways. Oh, so okay. the pathways, well, um, instead of lessons and courses do not have certificates. Oh. Pathways have certificates. So we've okay. fully utilized using pathways to ensure that students get a certificate at the end of the program. Okay, so let me count the ways then. How many certificates do they get at the end of one year? First year, how many certificates do they get? Um, it depends on the course, but more or less, they get uh, seven to eight, more, uh, to more eight. or less. Okay. Because in one subject, uh, sometimes we integrate up to three to four certificates okay. within one subject. Okay, and that's just for one year. And so you multiply yeah. that one year or that's one semester? That's one semester. One semester. Unsen. So like multiply that yes. maybe uh, seven times. You've got, this is, these are the micro credentials you get on top of the diploma. And if you want to go for TESLA certification, this is on top of that as well. And you're benchmarking against what? The who's who in schools. You've got all the branded schools. So that means to say all the schools that you have on your screen, uh, John, earlier, the logos of these schools are using the same materials that uh, LP is using as well. Yeah, but very different ways. Uh, okay. you know, we have schools in the United States, schools in Europe, and schools in Asia. I would say the LPU has been one of the best schools to fully integrate. In <laughs> of course, yeah. making, uh, make, in the words of Beth, making sure that there's value for money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Director Tina, that, that is something that we have to justify, not just to our students, but of course to the management at the end of the day. You know, we had to really, you know, pull their sleeves and then really explain to them the value of what we are proposing. And it's not, you know, very easy because there are several providers that you have to choose from. And um, we have to be able to clearly, you know, draw the line why this was chosen. And of course, that, uh, um, you know, price sensitivity among our uh, market of students. So, okay. and of course, I always haggle with John in terms of, uh, because they're very strict also with the deadline of uh, payment. In the Philippines, we used to haggle to extend, extend, extend. And so John would tell us that, you know, uh, Dean Beth, that uh, Costco is very strict. And so this is, you know, the maximum allowable time that you can, but of course in the Philippines, you know, there, there are several pathways for requests to be approved for yeah. us to be able to release yeah. this, but you okay. know, they, they've been very helpful and they understood uh, where we're coming from. Okay, so if you could just, you know, 10 months, 400, 420 pesos with 400, with 42 certificates at 4,500, 4, you get like a hundred, 
peso for an international certificate of that. And so really, there's value for everything that you get there. Uh, you know, I'm just curious, assessment. What if you have two students working on the same pathway? They answer the assessment. They can have, they can be. The, uh, the questions actually, the, actual, uh, the questions actually shuffle. So oh. that was also one of the things that I, um, a lot of students, if you've noticed, there are attempts okay. uh, in the results I've shown you. Yeah. Sometimes students will tell us, we've already made four or five attempts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, but we still didn't get the, the record score for that yes. examination because it really shuffles. So yeah. you can you cannot cheat the system just to answer okay. the questions. Yeah. Um, John, like how many questions do you have? How many questions in a test bank? Oh God, I don't know. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> so that means to say uh, it's next to impossible to get, you know, the same set of questions, even if you repeat an assessment. Well, and remember, each student has their own access. So if I was sitting next to my friend and trying to take the same exam, like I said, the questions would be different. Yeah. But even if my friend would take the exam for me, um, he wouldn't get credit. It's all oh. under my account or her account, and it would okay. mix if I did it otherwise. So okay. it's not foolproof, but there's definite difficulties in trying to cheat the system. So how, like do you, how do you make sure that the student, the actual student is taking, not some proxy is taking the assessment for them, the code? How do you make right. sure that it's not happening? Maybe a good question for Heinz. How do you make sure it's them back to taking? <laughs> you know? This is the reason why we've not uh, placed it as part of the major examinations, oh. rather than uh, we focus it on the school requirements. Because again, the purpose this is the purpose of Lobster Inc. Uh, in the perspective of LPU is as a supplemental learning material. Correct. We still focus on the teacher uh, taught materials because again, they have the option to to take a uh, retake the theoret theoretical assessments. Mm -hmm. So no matter how many times they get it, as long as they get at least a minimum of 80 okay. percent, then that's ah, the only time that they can get it. 80% is high, huh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the number okay. to beat, 80. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of our regular uh, participants asked this question. Uh, is Lobster Inc. available for individual subscription, especially for trainers who want to upgrade skills and knowledge? Or how does it work? Uh, do they have to coordinate with a school that has a Lobster subscription? Or how does it, how, John, what would be an alternative? Because it's just one person who's doing the, who wants to take a subscription. How do you do, how, how does it work around that your, your requirements? Honestly, they can't. They and and can't. that's, they can't. They have to go through either their employer or in this case, through the school. And, and I think that's that's correct, because there could be a slight cannibalization of the school's efforts if the individuals could come directly to Lobster Inc. and say, hey, give me access. Okay. There's no, as we say, B2C model with Lobster okay. Inc. You have to okay. get it to your, your provider. Yeah. So maybe uh, LPU can consider doing a, a creating a department for professional development. This is for uh, uh, professionals who want to take some of the Lobster Inc. programs if there's nothing... Yeah. No institution, no, no tourism enterprise that has uh, taken the subscription already with uh, Lobster Inc. Yeah, it's something I highly, highly encourage. And it makes perfect sense for an easy expansion to a continuous professional development program at a school. And mm -hmm. again, what we're finding is with the industry, they're reaching out for training, but um, you know, who is going to be the one they trust? And, okay. and frankly, honestly, if you go, if you're an industry partner and you go to Lobster Inc. directly, um, it's very expensive because, again, mm. it's a corporate enterprise solution. Mm. If they would go through the school, then it'd be a much more affordable option because they could pick and choose who they want to run the training uh, through from their staff. You know? I remember in the tourist, PH, uh, which is Tourism Human Resource Congress, you mentioned that uh, there was a possibility for small enterprises to actually be, to subscribe to, uh, because the number... Of course, you won't find a, uh, a tourism enterprise with three thousand employees. How do, how do they how can they afford your program then? Well, that's actually the next evolution of my vision with Lobster Inc. So really, with this year one, we've proven that it works in a school environment. But still, school environments are somewhat limited in terms of scale, right? Yeah. So technology companies always think about scale, scale, scale. Well, there's only X number of schools around the world who offer hospitality or tourism, mm -hmm. and Y number of that can make it work, like LPU. Mm -hmm. But there are millions and millions and millions of small, medium businesses who right now 
cannot get access because Lobstreet very clearly will tell them 100,000 euros or they won't pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. So my next model with Lobsterique is to work with an association in the country where they are to make it available to the members of the association at very, very, very reasonable cost. Oh. So basically like, like I, I think we discussed it with Tim Fee. Imagine yeah. that Tim Fee markets and promotes Lobstering to all the industry partners. Okay. Industry partner says, I'm interested. Okay. When they come to buying it, maybe they go through LPU or maybe they go through HOSCO. Uh, maybe LPU can be our partner to the industry who wants to have it. Mm -hmm. And that way we can make it much, much more affordable than the corporate solution that would be at the Marriott, Tilton, Hyatt level, you know? Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a question from Mahendra. He was asking about customizing for syllabus uh, of the university in India. And I was maybe, I, I guess that, the response for that would be the curriculum mapping that you did, uh, uh, Chef Heinz. Can you walk us through that? So you've got all the subjects and you've got all the learning pathways identified? Yes, correct. Uh, and that's, you know, you, you can spell out already the number of R's. So what was, what was your consideration in terms of the number of R's? Like if it's a 54 R per semester um, lecture class, how much of that would be Lobster Inc? Um, actually, if you look at the pathways, some, some, um, for example, prof uh, professional and proficient are two separate certifications, yeah. yet they have the same content, on, uh, but for proficient, it's only minimal. So mm -hmm. it would look like it's a lot of hours, yet mm -hmm. when you compute the total hours, it's just minimal. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of hours, since we're doing asynchronous classes, mm -hmm. So we were, we've provided the students the option to do the lobster ink during their asynchronous classes because okay. currently our setup is that we only utilize um, 25 hours mm. of the supposed to be more than 50. Uh, if it's time for a 118, if I'm not if it's mistaken. Back lab. Uh -uh. lab subject. So we can fully utilize the remaining hours for so that's our consideration there. Okay. So the title of our webinar was, is it really in your fingertips? <laughs> My question. Uh, uh, let me start with Beth. Uh, lobster egg, was it really in your fingertips? Because it used to be at your hands. Is it really in your fingertips? Is it as easy as handling it in the keystrokes of your laptop? I would say yes, uh, Director Tina. It's, you know, just... Uh, about being open to a lot of possibilities. And um, of course, uh, with Lobster Inc., we've opened the system to them, our you know, challenges, our limitations. And uh, with that, they were able to address all of these concerns. I think it's about time to um, look into possible ways for us to be able to innovate in terms of the delivery of the instruction. Because if we're expecting that you know, it's going to be back to the face-to-face -face setup. It may not happen. It may or it may not happen. But one thing is for sure, we have to transition, we have to pivot. And of course, we have to utilize um, a system that would really work with our, um, you know, specific HEIs. And basically, the, the thing that we have tested in LPU may or may not work in the other systems. But the I think um, it's really on our uh, hands. It's, it's in our fingertips. And so all of us has to learn all of these things one way or the other. It's about decision making. It's about really working together, having the commitment to deliver quality and efficiency in the delivery of teaching and learning. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is, of course, the experiences of our learners. And at the same time, how you will be able to transition them from the academic to the industry. And if we have a very good system, that's, that's a, like uh, what we're utilizing. I think half of our problems, half our challenges were, were have been solved already. And as um, what you've been saying, you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to create, you know, in Love Strength Day, they're so used to what we call pathways. <laughs> And so you just have to learn how to follow that pathway so that you can get to that uh, right direction. So I remember the, it's uh, on our the uh, saying of our test, the consultant before, adopt, adapt. <laughs> and you, you, you do a lot yeah. of things on this. Uh, uh, Chef Heinz, really, with the work that you're doing and managing uh, uh, 3,500 <laughs> students, uh, hundred, how many faculty members are actually using a lobster egg? Is it really um, we have 59. 
59. 59 faculty. Okay. Really? Is it in your face? You're staying in front of the computer like 24-7. Is that because it, it's your, in your fingertips or what? It's yes, not. indeed. Um, some, because sometimes, um, well, I remember yesterday I was telling you I was going back to Manila. Sometimes um, during our on-site um, yes. uh, duties, okay. Yeah. Um, some concerns are being uh, sent to me while I'm on travel. So okay. even if I'm on travel, I can easily send uh, or um, access Lobster Inc. So as uh -huh. again, as I've told you earlier, it's readily accessible in whatever devices, in whatever, um, if it's a, is it a laptop, a desktop, a okay. tablet, or a cell okay. phone? It's so easy to use and it's so easy to access. Yeah, in this world of multiple devices, multitasking <laughs> and everything, everything really is in your fingertips. John Lore, your promise of what was the idea of Lobster Inc. when they say that it's in your hands, it's in your fingertips. Is it really, what was the vision of Lobster Inc.? To make it very easy for any user? It was to get it, really to a B, what I call it a B2C, but to a wider audience. Mm. You know, they realized both from a, you know, a strategic business perspective, as well as a user perspective, they were kind of tapping out, you know, mm. when you, there are only X number of big corporate brands out there. Mm. But what they also realized is that the time it takes to service smaller, medium businesses or schools is simply longer. Mm. Most importantly, they didn't have a clue about what schools needed. Mm -hmm. And although I'm not an academic, again, I've dealt with schools for a very long time. And that was my main pitch to them to unlock this ability to say, look, okay. you know, why not let a student learn what they'll already need to know when they get to the industry, because they'll be a better employee. And then it saves the industry even more time in getting them up, up to date. And they're like, this makes sense. Yeah. And of course, then pandemic came, right? So my, my, I think the vision has been realized in unlocking the opportunity. It's been okay. unlocked. Costco is the official partner to do it for schools. But my main concern is that expansion into the SMBs and finding the right partners to get the word out. You know, at some point, we would love to scale this, that we have an operation in the Philippines, in Europe, in the United States, who is servicing those small, medium businesses. Because just as the questions Heinz had from the school, the same thing will happen with the industry, right? And so it's a high volume of service that's required to meet that need. Okay. But little, little glimpse of the future. Why is Hosco doing this? Well, we're doing this because our dedication to our members is to provide jobs and connections. And now it's providing learning. So what you could expect maybe in a year from now is that registering to Lobster Inc. will also register you to Hosco because it makes perfect sense for a student to have access to training. Lifelong learning. Jobs. That's it. Lifelong learning. So if the hand is just one, the fingers, yeah. you have five, then you're yeah. really reaching out to more people at this time. So thank you. You know, time just flew very quickly. It's now 6.09. Uh, it's just starting for lunch uh, your way, uh, John. But I think you have some good news for our participants, John. You mentioned something I do. yesterday. I do. I'll share my screen one more time here. So for everybody who attended, um, we did the same thing for the first tip fee conference. We're going to give a free access to a small bundle of courses on Lobster Inc. And these are really the core. It's the most basic fundamental training. It's f &B Service Essentials has eight lessons, 92 minutes. Bartending Essentials, eight lessons, two hours, 27 minutes. Front Office Essentials, eight hours, or eight lessons, 79 minutes. And Housekeeping Essentials, nine lessons, two hours, 50 minutes. We'll give this to everyone attending here for about one month. And of course, we can't give it forever. Uh, so you really get a feel. When you access this, so use a simple QR code or the code like Heinz was showing you, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera. And you'll be in the platform. You'll be able to use the platform features to see how it's arranged. You'll be able to access these courses to really get a feel. Um, and that's free, that's, that's given by us. And we're happy to do that uh, just so you can really get a, a, an understanding of how this works. Mm -hmm. And look, if any of you have any questions, again, john at hosco.com, very, very simple. I'll be happy to answer in more detail. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, John. In fact, everybody has uh, food for thought, food for the fingers as well. So thank you very much, Chef Heinz, for sharing the, uh, the difficult, but not so difficult journey. It was really be, ma uh, making sure that you just uh, match the pathways for each particular subject. 
Thank you, Beth, also for sharing your uh, decision-making process. There were a lot of meetings, I know, uh, a lot of discussions that you had. You had to ask the most difficult questions, most probably. John uh, is already bombarded with a lot of questions. You were the conduit for that. And John, thank you very much for sharing your time with us and giving our uh, TIDP participants a lot of goodies uh, for this. Uh, I know that we have quite a number. Just give me a few more minutes before we wind up. I saw somebody asking for the uh, uh, evaluation. We'll go to that in a bit. So thank you very much. Let's just give them a round of applause, everyone. If you can just put on your uh, reaction buttons. Uh, I think they deserve more than just a thumbs up. Maybe a hearts would be something that's good as well. Just give them uh, those reaction. Keep them keep it pouring. Okay, so thank you. Let me just go back to my slides then. Let me, uh, where is my, there, this slide. Okay. Are we there? Are we, are we, are, am I sharing the right slide? <laughs> Wait, let me just go. Uh, oh, here, this one. Are we good? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, in uh, thank you very much, uh, John, for your 20 minutes was right on, uh, on time, but uh, the leader, Beth had a lot of ideas, but I think no minute was wasted on her with her presentation. Chef Heinz also did a lot of presentation, uh, walking us through uh, how to implement the lobster in their program. So we did the uh, presentation. We'd like to award now the certificates uh, of appreciation to our uh, speakers. We'd like to award a certificate of recognition to John Lohr for actually providing us with a lot of information, sharing the good news about the Lobster Inc. Thank you, John, for uh, do we is uh, Tinet going to share the spotlight you on? Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Beth, the leader, for sharing the way, uh, and uh, Chef Heinz for uh, really giving in the details on the implementations. We'd like to thank you for taking time to really prepare for your slides and making sure that everybody gets to understand the thought process as, the, as, as, as well as the action plans that went into deciding to bring in Lobster Inc. into your school. We'd also make, uh, make mention that we will be awarding certificates of uh, uh, awarding certificates to our participant. But again, certificates will be issued only to those who have 80% attendance in a webinar based on Zoom records, okay? Zoom has a very uh, specific way of making mon of monitoring, making sure that you're all there. If you get uh, cut out, uh, then it will come back. I'd also like to mention, though, that uh, one of our board members who was, I left her in Upton, uh, Dr. Glo, is now back with us. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Glo, for representing uh, TIBFI in that very most important uh, meeting as well. You have to accomplish the evaluation form that, we're go uh, that is going to be flashed in a bit. Uh, the evaluation form, uh, the Certificate will be sent to you together with the uh, bundle of joy uh, that John promised together with the access code uh, once we have prepared the certificate. So this is now the webinar evaluation. Do take a picture of the QR code that you have here and uh, accomplish it and you'll receive your e-certificate as well as uh, speaker's presentation. The video for this particular Zoom is actually going to be posted as well in the... Uh, uh, tip free website. So you've taken a picture already, did uh, Tinet, you've placed it already in the uh, evaluation, accomplished evaluation there. She's done that. Let me just, you know, uh, whenever I do a webinar, I always say that we've got to have some call to action step. And so this is my call to action. There's always one word that I use and it's the same, be hospitable. Why be hospitable? Because uh, be happy that there's such a thing as this gift. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel as mentioned by Beth. Uh, there's a material that's available, very value for money is already there. If you divide it in, you know, take a look at number of months that you have, how many certificates that you get, etc. You're going to be happy. Your, your faculty members are going to be forced to tape, to do videotapes of uh, what, cutting, slicing, whatever, it's readily available already there. You're on the right path that uh, if you do what other schools are doing, and I'm very happy that uh, Beth uh, showed the uh, way that uh, LPU did it. It's simple. It's just, you know, giving you uh, everything already and just make sure that you 
be passionate about hospitality because you know you have got to make sure that whatever skills you have is something that's going to be relevant to industry and what more better way than to use this particular uh uh, which is a platform that you have because this is actually used also by various uh, industry partners already. Be inclusive. There are ways that you can work around the costing. Uh, maybe talk to John. My go to word now is talk to John because he'll find a way for you. It's a transformative because the world, the world of work, uh, once you graduate, is something going to be different. It's not going to be what you have before. There's going to be a lot of uh, what digital uh, inclusions already. Maybe uh, a lot of analytics are going to be done. More reports and online is the way to go for that. Be attentive. You know, uh, uh, there are a lot of materials that are made available, but nobody is stopping you to actually visit other topics that are available in the uh, lobster. Uh, menu that you have be bold uh, if you're the first school that's going to be doing it uh, in your region etc then maybe show the way because then you'll find out that others will follow uh, and in the words of Kevin Coster uh, build the field and uh, people will follow <laughs> lifelong learning even if you've done you've completed already your bachelor's degree for faculty members this is the way to go this is you know I've got a, a lot of materials for you to study as well be enthusiastic about this gift that we have right now. Uh, Timfi is here to support you. And we're very happy to be part of this journey with you. They say it's more fun in the Philippines, but learning with Lobster in Costco is more fun at that. So thank you very much at your service. This is Timfi. We thank you for your kind attention. Dr. Glow, you want to say a few words? I know I left you in uh, <laughs> that uh, your microphone is uh, there. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Glow. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, actually, it was uh, enjoyable, you know, um, having the collaboration, possible collaboration with the different uh, Asian countries. And um, TIDFI uh, would have to expect a lot of uh, these collaborations. Uh, I missed the presentations in here, but however, I know uh, Dr. Beth will be sharing to me also. It is interesting. And uh, I think the, the rest of our schools can do it. You yeah. just have really to do it. Yeah. And thank you to our TIDFI for continuing serving our academe and the industry. Thank you so much, John, for the nice program. Thank okay. you, uh, Chef Heinz. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite everyone to please open your uh, video. Can we do that, uh, Tinet? So everybody can have a picture with our uh, speakers. Thank you. Uh, we still have around 89 people who are with us, but thank you. This is a good opportunity to ask. If you have any questions, throw it out to whoever while we're doing the pictures. I need to take uh, three. Uh, oh, hi, Cecil, you're there. <laughs> So Paul, uh, he had some comments about some of the questions. Uh, Dr. Pa uh, Sharma for staying on uh, with us as well. So, okay, I'll take the first. Uh, if you have any questions, do verbalize and microphones are open, uh, Tinette. Uh, I'll take the picture now. Ready, get, keep smiling because there's three pains. I don't know what pain you are in, but uh, ready, get set, go. Anyone? Everybody's quiet now. What's happening? <laughs> Okay, I go to the second pain. Okay, keep on smiling. Ready? Get set. Go. Go. Okay. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. There was something in the middle. Let me just, okay. Ready? Get set. Go. And we're all over. We have uh, north to south. We have participants north to south. We also have people from other parts of the world. So I know I invited some from India. I, I also had some friends from Indonesia who committed and some from Thailand. So I hope that you had an interesting afternoon uh, towards nighttime. And uh, this is uh, good learning for everyone. So thank you. Uh, I've taken everybody's picture. Uh, you'll see it by, in my Facebook account when I put in the pictures uh, later on. So thank you very much. Uh, if you, oh, Miss Susan is there. I was just texting her earlier, all the way from Pampanga. <laughs> and uh, let me see. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, be safe, uh, be healthy. 
take your vaccination if you want to do limited face-to-face -face classes pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Tina. Thank you, Ma'am Tina. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor Mahendra, all the way in India. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Cecil, hello. <laughs> yes, so Sir Paul, hello, Paul. For those who are still uh, here with us, if you have, uh, please block already December 6. I know it's at 1 p.m., I think, uh, when we have the public orientation for CMO 18, as well as on practicum options. And we also have CMO uh, 27 on limited face to face. So if you're if you want to ask some you have if you have some burning questions about the CMOs, uh, then join us. Uh, we put out the the uh, the link pretty soon. We have also friends from Tesla because in the development of the CBLM, these are good materials that you can actually use as well. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, we're very thankful for everyone's support. So uh, we hope that you respond to the survey. The survey is going to ask you questions about, uh, about a speaker as well as when uh, to receive your e-certificate. Tinet is posting there. You need to complete 80% attendance in the webinar. And we have a worksheet that actually comes with a Zoom. Uh, you've got to make sure that you're listed there as well as accomplish the evaluation form. Once you do that, we'll send out the email together with the uh, promised gift from John. Don't forget that, John. You've got a different. Let's see if this particular group of participants will yield you a higher utilization on the access for uh, Lobster Inc. But it's nice. I've done a few uh, of your lobster courses when I was when you first brought out the idea. What several? Great. Not a decade ago, <laughs> some years back. <laughs> okay. Oh, pinagsarhan na kayo bet jan sa LPU. I heard that the, <laughs> that the internet was being <laughs> reduced in bandwidth, and I was just uh, and Heinz had the presence of mind to use the uh, data, but you were in the middle of your. If your talk, you were freezing. I was wondering if it was me that was uh, actually having challenges with my internet, but I could see that in your picture it had uh, Beth is experiencing low bandwidth. I said it was me, Beth. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's Tinette. challenging here in the office. <laughs> Thank you, Tinet, for Thank the, you, Miss uh, Tinet. She's Thank the you, one who Tinette. made all of this possible, all the spotlighting yeah. and all the uh, links and everything. So thank you. I hope you had a good time. So why aren't these people leaving? You have questions? It's like a submission. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I shall end. Then you, John, you said one and a half hours. We've done two hours uh, yeah. on this. So it's the Philippine time, really. Uh, they're just so interested about products. Uh, learning and uh, the TPS uh, trademark also, Mam Tina. Uh, <laughs> next tip, next yeah. webinar, tip, uh, Ben, you're you're back on this seat. Uh, seat uh, the moderator. <laughs> you know, Tina, I was going to ask for tip feet. You can be, can you be a student and join too? Can you be a young talent, or do you have to be like an academic or an industry? Uh, yeah, but you have to be a tourism stakeholder. Yeah, students, faculty, uh, trainers. We have individual membership, but your association or your individual your institutional uh your in we we just had a change in our uh constitution uh for you to be an individual member your organization has to be an institutional member or a regular member and yeah. so uh that's good uh paul lim saw is actually was a former yeah. board member uh he helped us uh, of the 42 years, uh, uh, Paul was a board member for a decade, most probably. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can find his name actually in some of the articles of, uh, what's this, in the changes that we've done in the constitution. So very thankful for that as well. Oh, we have Vanji from UST uh, with us as well. I think, uh, Vanji, how are you? Are you also uh, in negotiation now with uh, Lobster Inc.? 
Yes, very interesting uh, topic. <laughs> Hi, Jan, how are you? <laughs> and we also have, uh, there's a, uh, which is a, uh, a comment from Paul that uh, PUP, you know, P PUP is, uh, you know, being a state university, uh, they may have more funds at that. Uh, maybe this is something that we can look at as, as well in terms of uh, support for uh, schools or students. And this is something that we really need to push as well. So looking forward to how we can make this a reality. So TESA has a lot of scholarship funds as well. So maybe uh, let's see how it works out. Probably out. Thinking about CHED and how you have this kind of framework for training. I mean, yeah. if we could do kind of like LPU did is just pick out a couple courses, not everything, yeah. and then align it to the CHED standards. Then, yeah. as you said, there's some funding available through tourism tax or something like that. Then we could make shed yeah. provided to all those like in those public yeah. institutions but at a small volume yeah. rather than the yeah. big you know yeah. and it, it, then you become more inclusive at that because you know a yeah. lot of schools that are out in the small region small <clears throat> provinces they may not have access to you know, the nice thing about this is it fits uh shed requirements about using updated materials so how often are these materials updated john i mean quite often but they're also uh sort of sunset too you know Classical. so yeah. Some, some materials are a bit older when they were created back when lobster ink was in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And even those, they're sort of, uh, you know, discontinuing. But then the new ones, they're mm -hmm. creating especially around housekeeping and health and safety, because mm -hmm. now Ecolab is making sure their branding and their knowledge is inside those programs, yeah. you know. Yeah, the, the, uh, the essential safety, is that the essential safety that yeah. you gave us? Uh, yeah. This was a course, this is a course that's already updated with the new protocols of COVID. It should be. Yeah, I saw one course was still mentioning about when vaccines get rolled out. So that was a yeah. little bit dated. But other okay. things, around them. because yeah. what, what they're actually doing is Ecolab, who has you know, millions of partners around the world, they're giving yeah. it to companies for free. Yeah. So if you're an Ecolab uh, hotel who's using their products, you get the free training. And that makes sense. You know, you, mm -hmm. if you bought a, a, a sanitary product, you want to make sure it's used the right way. So mm -hmm. that makes sense good mm -hmm. amount of sense yeah but you know in europe you're absolutely right like so we have these big private schools who are using it but we have thousands of vocational schools in europe in italy in france and germany and they simply just don't have the money okay. but we think we can get it through like erasmus plus funding mm -hmm. and we actually already put together a bid to have 150 vocational schools in france get lobster ink paid by the european union you mm -hmm. know so that's the kind of things i'm trying to explore yeah. the government like said, is really supporting yeah. perspective you know? tourism really is a what uh, a huge economic driver for uh for many countries uh we have another board member with us uh, dr susan of uh, upait who's with us as well and we have arnold uh i just sent him a message this uh, afternoon was it this morning and dr arnold dr arnold you had a hand raised earlier yeah was your question answered Arnold, Dr. Arnold, Ancheta, are you okay? Your question, you had, a, you had your hand raised earlier, but uh, he's a CHED supervisor in a region up north, and he's very, very uh, much interested with uh, some of the materials that we have. And maybe it's something that he can also share with some of the schools that are having some difficulty in sourcing uh, you know, uh, flexible learning materials because you know the books are can be challenging. How do you translate these books into something that's soft copy and having a cloud-based, uh, ano uh, cloud-based materials ready available twenty four seven? And when when Chef Heinz mentioned that even students who were on vacation mode were actually uh, really using it as a Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was the biggest aha moment for me in this presentation. I didn't quite realize that fact when he shared it before, but yeah, they have access to everything. And even though they don't have to do it, they're choosing to do it. That, that's a great statistic. You, know? you have a number for that, uh, Chef Heinz? How many? I, I didn't see the number, but I just saw like maybe a fourth or no, a tenth. Um, I think it's, wait, I'll look back. Okay. Because it was a good number. I said it was significant because otherwise it, it would have been flat. <laughs> <laughs> It was around 10,000, uh, 1,000. 1,000? Oh, can you imagine? Mm. Are this, uh, 100. if you want to take a look at, maybe are this the uh, Dean's Lister or are these people just wanting to make use, uh, make effective use of uh, time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, is it uh, 
data consuming because you know that's a usual complaint of students there's uh, lms how much does it use in terms of data would you have that number so i mean what i know is that um, when they access on their phones it's not an app so you're just having a normal website cloud-based service so you're not taking a lot of data when you're using on a mobile device okay because a lot of students now complain that a lot of their allowance is going into data because of Zoom requirements. So maybe that's something you can ask technical staff to check on uh, if this material is going to consume what a significant amount of their data. Then uh, or that's <clears throat> that could be also a good selling point. Uh, use our materials; it's not going to eat so much of your. Oh, we have Dr. Edit also here from uh, NCR. Yes. We're going to have a. Uh, uh, our quad, uh, what's this, uh, NCR uh, meeting on Thursday. We have Catherine uh, Camille Nagal from US, and dami yung UST dito, ah. dito si Dr. Sus, si, Susa, si, si Cecil, si Dr. Banji, and Dr. Catherine as well. So that's nice to see that we have a lot of. Uh, Hi, Hello. And are you representing also host code? I mentioned to, uh, I sent it, this to uh, Vicky Nanyagas earlier on as well. So, um, uh, not exactly, Ma'am Tina. <laughs> uh, USD, USD, yeah, hat. Yes, yes, definitely. USD yes, had them. Yes. Okay, so, okay, so everybody, it's time for dinner over here, it's time for lunch over there. Yes. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you, Tine. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm ending. Bye. Thank you so much. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.